But there's honestly, there's honestly no hat that I can't wear. I can wear a hat of a millionaire. I can wear a hat of a homeless person. I can wear a hat of a, a, a of abusive person, a person who abused people and been abused. I can hand, wear the hat of being sexually abused, homeless, on welfare. You know, I, I can wear all the hats that you can imagine. And and and, and you know, I honestly, I, I, I not in a bad way, but I, I'm proud that I was able and and able to go through these things because only now can I help those people. All right, so episode 42, we're back, uh, and this has been uh, someone that we've been super excited and uh, really looking forward to, man. Flex Wheeler, man. I, fi- I can't believe you're actually here. I know. Uh, you know, Matt's been contacting me for a couple of weeks now, uh, trying to get this going, so sorry. You know, it wasn't, wasn't due to putting you off, obviously. You know how I feel about you, and we go super far back. It's just, you know, health problems in hospitals and stuff like that but don't matter i'm here now well so. it's it's crazy because you know when we talk about bodybuilding and the bodies that are on stage uh your physique is probably the the prettiest and most complete body that ever graced the stage and that's like what you're known i mean i know they call you the sultan of symmetry and they call you all these other things but got a few people call me other things too of course <laughs> <laughs> But you, you know, you genetically, I mean, we talk about genes and, and, uh, you know, bodies that are built for bodybuilding and, you know, everyone talks about the body of Flex Wheeler. You know, I, I, I can't, I can't take no credit for that, right? No more than I can take credit for my skin color or my height. That that was just my, my father in heaven who blessed me with that. You know, um, that's the easy part, but no matter what, you know, I think regardless whether we're an A list or a C list of something that we're doing uh, or or D list, uh, we just want to be accepted as a person. And for you saying that and and hear other peers and people saying that is it's, it's for me, I take it as acceptance. And, you know, I've said this a billion times, but it it doesn't get old. It doesn't matter whether you're gay or straight or lesbian, or, you know, you come from Venus or Mars or green antennas coming out of your head. You just want to walk into a room and be accepted by people and not judged. So when you say that, you know, someone as great as you are, and when I hear other people say that, who, who, in my opinion, reached a pinnacle of the sport and they look down and say that about me, it's like, wow, what better acceptance can you get, you know, just earning that respect from your peers? Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. What's the best body that's ever hit a bodybuilding stage? Flex Wheeler. When, though? Was it 93? (laughs) That twisting back shot. Yeah. That is the most perfect iconic I think, physique ever to walk this like i have the quad stomp bro like yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah you like do. Yeah. 2009 which was late in my career right even after you even said i shouldn't have won one of those olympics oh right? was a, yeah yeah 2007 was a, right was a, i was, sta- was i was a, actually uh, standing yeah, outside so, when you and so, chad Nick so, Vic, 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 Victor, Victor, yeah, 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 so, yeah. so thanks listen, for bringing that up no we, we, <laughs> we friends, talk though. about yeah, everything here so that 93 season was like People that I wish social media existed then because that physique, I mean, if you, I want you to be honest. Yes, sir. Has there been a body like that that's ever hit the stage that you've seen since then? I know you're inside that body. Right. Be honest with us. But I don't, I don't think there's ever been another body of a body. There's, there's never going to be another own. Jay. I know. Right. I know. Yeah. You know, there's never going to be, there's never going to be a freaking Ronnie, you know? Um, so to answer that question, simply no, because there's never going to be another one of us. And, and I wouldn't want it to be. I would want it to be a better version anyway. You know, if, you know, like, I feel records are meant to be broken. And if they're not never broken, then that means that sport or whatever it is hasn't excelled beyond that. You know, me and you are in the cars. You use so more now than me. Uh, but you take, you know, Mercedes Benz back in our days versus Mercedes Benz. They can't compete. Why should they? It's evolved. So, you know, our record should identify to our sport continuously evolving. And I don't I don't really think it's the greatest thing for our sport for me to be argumentatively one of the best or or you or or Ronnie, because we're so outdated. So what does that mean about our sport? You know what I mean? What about what about this? That physique 
could it have been better? Yeah. Where? <laughs> Everywhere, especially here. Where the mind goes, the body follows. I mean, <clears throat> I didn't know nothing about bodybuilding in. I didn't know about dieting in. I didn't know about diuretics. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm very honest. I took one aldactone for that show. I know, I, but dude, like, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to dive straight in, and I don't want to get, like, I know we have a lot to talk about, but you know that physique was the greatest, right? I, at I that point, but... Did you chase that physique every show after 93? No, I tried to be. See, so, so that's a mistake. Like, I think, I think most athletes, when they, they have their debut in their sport, um, they continuously getting better. They don't hit off like in their 90 percentile. And, and in my ignorance, and I think also the ignorance of the sport, because it wasn't me. I'm so green. I remember after the owner classic, a judge coming up to me telling me, yeah, you won this, but that physique could never can stand next to Dorian. You better get better. And I'm like, and, you know, I, I was kind of rough around the edges. I looked at him like, what the F you mean? Yeah. The only way I'm going to get better is in a coffin. How can I get harder than that? You know, being harsh. But the truth is I wasn't aware at that time that I was like in my 90 percentile the best I could be. So being that other physiques like, like Ronnie and like Dorian beat me, that means that they, they're viewing that physique better than mine. So I chased after whatever the winning physique was, right? And it, it was wrong. I remember, you know, Chris finally admitted to me, but when we were uh, training together, you know, he's like, man, listen, I, I got, and he just stopped. I'm like, no, 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 tell me. And it was years later after I retired, he finally told me. I was like, you know, why did you wait? He goes, because I wanted to beat you. I go, what were you going to tell me? And he goes, man, don't change. Just don't change, Flex. Just, just, just kind of better what you are, but don't chase after that weight. He goes, but I didn't tell you that because I, I wanted to beat you, and I knew that would be your downfall. But, you know, um, it's kind of – so I was so immature with that. You know, you look at someone like, like, like yourself or, you know, even more so, um, I think, um, Sean, you know, he didn't chase after us size-wise. He stayed right in his comfort zone where you get, you know, I won't say other competitors' names, but they're a small physique like him, but they're chasing after that size. And we look at them and like, come on, man, that's too much weight for you, you know, at, at whatever, 5'3 or 5'4. So I, I also wasn't comfortable enough of who I was as a person, so I just chased that person. But I didn't know anything. I mean, geez, that was my second pro show, and I know you. I don't even know how I. Yeah, I don't even I know how I did Hunter that. Hunter Labrada in the picture. I know, I know. How Look crazy is that? I know, but that twisting double bicep uh, shot. I just, I just emulated after all these other greats, you know, Serge Newbright and these these guys that I thought hit these poses, but I didn't know what I was doing, man. You know, um, I didn't know what I was doing at all. I just remember the great Phil Hill with the massive legs, right? Uh, he did. The, he used to do the splits, and uh, I met him and he guest posed one time, uh, and he did the splits. And uh, he's like, you know, he's like, man, let's go, you know, because he guest posed in Fresno, and he's like, let's go have dinner. I'm like, oh my god, you know, this dude is inviting me to dinner, and I remember walking, he's kicking his legs out like this because they're so massive, and he's like, you know, so he heard you've been in martial arts this that and other. He goes, can you do the splits? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, do it on stage. And I'm like, who cares about some skinny bastard yeah, no doing really it? You know. Did it. And he goes, oh, man, a crowd would love it. I go, but, yeah, look at your legs. He goes, no, nah, just do it at a separate. And that's, that's why I started doing the splits, you know. So You get chills when you watch this ever? Um, no, I don't, I don't get chills. Actually, it's probably more negative thoughts than anything because I, I know what I was thinking. I know how I was hurting uh, mentally and everything like that. You know, when I, I look at my history and, and pictures like that. And even, you know, the, uh, the little picture of it, me there smiling. And I was like, wow, I just, I just wish you loved yourself more. Mm -hmm. You appreciated the physique that you presented. Just Your me confidence. life. Cause I mean, at that point in time, I was still trying to kill myself. I mean, I was just very, I was very dedicated to trying to take myself to trying to take my life. You know, I mean, the first time I tried to kill myself and I'm not talking about, um, like thoughts i'm talking act you know first time i acted and ended up in a hospital i was 12 years old you know and and throughout my entire career um i i act i did certain acts trying to take my life you know like like speeding driving at 190 miles an hour it's not that i'm I, that big of a speed demon i just didn't care and i just didn't want to be here so 
when I look at that, you know, I'm just like, wow, man, I just, I wish I can just go back and tell that kid, just, man, enjoy yourself. You know, look what you're doing, you know, love yourself. You know, you deserve to be here. But, you know, I, I said it in a, a video the other day when I turned 57, you know, I didn't think I would ever get out of my 20s. Yeah, happy birthday, by the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I I didn't think I'd get out of my 20s, so I lived like I wasn't going to be here long. I spent money and burned through everything in my 30s and my 40s, and now I'm finally, you know, um, I'm at a point now, or I appreciate it. Yeah, the last time I was in a hospital was just so horrible. And I've never had heart problems, you know. Um, You know, they've always said, you know, geez, you know, Flex, you've been in hundreds of surgeries. Thank God your heart's so strong. But this time my heart did something. I can't remember what it was, but they rushed in a room because they had all these monitors on me all the time. And he's like, how do you feel? And I'm like, I'm fine. I was asleep. What's going on? It's like, wow, you know, your heart did something eight times in a row. And I'm like, what? I'm like, now what? And they're like, nothing. If it was worse than that, we wouldn't be talking to you, Flex. And I'm like, wait a minute. I can, I can try to fight to recover, right? I can be strong when they have medication. They're like, listen, Flex, you know, you, you got to keep breathing or else we got to take you off of it. I can fight. How do you fight to make your heart keep doing its job? I couldn't go to sleep. And um, I had these dark thoughts. And this is the first time I'm ever talking about this. I had these dark thoughts where it's almost like my spirits came out and they were looking at me like, here you have been calling death upon yourself since you were a kid. It's closer than you think. (sighs) I couldn't sleep for days because I'm like, at what point anybody who passed away at what point do they realize they're not here anymore? It's like that, that quote, wake up dead. I'm like, Jesus, what if I go to sleep and I wake up and I realize I'm not here? I don't want that. So I just, at that point, I made a decision like, man, I'm never going to have suicidal thoughts. I'm never going to try to take my life anymore because it's going to happen. So, man, I'm just going to live as hard as I can. I'm going to smile. I'm going to enjoy life. The pain that I go through and everything like that, I'm just going to embrace it because I'm here. And look how many people we lost in our sport alone. Mm -hmm. So, man, you know, um, so that's what I wish. Um, That's my biggest wish that I could go back and just like, man, just tell myself, man, just, you're okay. You're okay, kid. Enjoy yourself. You know, it's amazing for me, like, to to hear you speak like that. And obviously it's emotional for you. Um, But, you know, as a, as a young kid uh, venturing to Gold's Venice, I mean, there was a trio there. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna call you guys the trio. It was yeah. you, you, Rico, and and Chris. Chris. Yeah, and you guys would tear the gym up. And I hear the stories. You know how you guys would challenge each other. You guys were like the strongest guys. Anyone that would come in the gym, you guys tried to intimidate them. Oh, yeah. to, like you would actually work next to them. Oh, yeah, to say, don't fuck with us in our territory. Right. This right? is our house. Yeah, and. You know, someone that boasts that much confidence. I watch you watch you walk into Gold's Venice with that strut. <laughs> I watched you park. You know, your your fancy sit out cars out, sit out, out front. for an hour waiting and for I know, parking. And your meditation would be the loudest music you could to whatever popular hip hop music was then right. happening. Right. West and every West. everyone respected you, and you owned that gym when you walked in in the in the singlets of the hot skins right the high, <laughs> yeah. high otomics no underwear with the socks yeah. yeah and you know you'd kind of just give the nod to everybody because yeah. that's that's what i experienced for the first time i was i spent eight hours in the, the gym the first time i went to gold's venice in 90 1993 around 90, the usa and yeah. chris, chris was competing yeah and you guys were over in the corner and john sherman was there yeah and you guys were, Char- charles glass was just watching you know chris and Chris was the underdog, right? But he yeah. was your training partner. You had won the year prior, so you were the man, right? German had won the Nationals, I believe, that fall. Yeah. And Damn, you got a memory. Yeah, Jeez, and, and you know, and I walked in there, and I'm like, that's Flex Wheeler. Jeez. Because I had only seen you in the books, and they used to have these Flex articles how, you know, you guys were the old school guys, barbell bench pressing, which you never see anyone doing anymore. Uh. <laughs> you train at Dragon's Lair. You train at all these gyms. Does anyone barbell bench press incline anymore like that? It's the best freaking chest movement that's and out And you there. guys would do five plates. Yeah. You did the 200-pound dumbbells on a Flex magazine photo shoot at Metrics. Do you remember that? Yeah, damn your memory. Yeah. Jeez, do you take those memory pills or something? <laughs> yeah. What the yeah. hell? Is but you can, understand, you can understand, bro, I studied. I studied what you guys did because my dream as an East Coaster was to move to to california but my perception was like these guys don't work hard Mm. and then i saw 
what you guys were doing, but I still thought you guys had the life because here you are showing up in convertibles and, you know, you're walking into the gym basically in tank tops or sleeveless tees or whatever else. And, you know, here I am in Massachusetts sledging in the gym with, with boots and having to change because we're going through the snow. And I'm like, man, right. I just got to get to California. You know, I see Sean Ray doing the same kind of thing. Fancy cars, pretty girls. Things you're beaches. doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah. you know, for 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 you to say like, hey, I I didn't love myself and I had I didn't have like self esteem. Yeah, it's shocking to me. Like, and I'm sure it's shocking to a lot of the the listeners and viewers that are because like we think bodybuilders are loaded with with confidence. I think it's actually just the opposite, Jay. You know, maybe you're one of those, and and I'm not saying, and I'm thankful that a lot of people weren't like cursed with with the thought of end of their own life i mean you really got to dive into that just for a second you know how bad can things be that you just want to take your life in a most devastating way but um i i i, I learned so um starting off where where i left to give you a cue to, to, to grab it so honestly you know what I found at a young age is, um, you know, because I, I was sexually abused uh, at the age of five till I was like 16. And, uh, you know, I was always beat up, you know, by either my family members or just anybody on the street who wanted to have a, a good time. And uh, I fought then. I fought in martial arts and I was extremely good, but I, I just, I was just wired different. I couldn't bring myself to hit someone. I mean, I would look at them. I like look at their face. I'm like, wow, what if I what if I kick them too hard and break their nose, or you know, man, what if I what if I break their ribs? So here I am. So I would just take the ass whooping because it didn't hurt. Um, but my point is, I learned at a young age that people will take your weaknesses and use them against you. I mean, you know, you can just be the most innocent person in the world, and whoever that person is, if they find out, they're going to use it against you. You know. Um, they're going to take advantage of you. And that's just the way the world is. So not really understanding, you know, Jay, but this, I developed, I, I, I didn't even know what was going on and I can't really take credit for it, but I developed this, this flex wheeler character who just didn't take no shit. Like I said, I, I always fought. I was always great at fighting, but the flex wheeler guy didn't mind fighting. So I could switch over to him. And if you wanted to ha make it happen, I'm like, man, let's make it happen. I'm enjoy hurting you. But that wasn't me as Kenny Wheeler. So I, I just started buying more into the Flex Wheeler character. People liked him more than they liked me. And, and you know, like right around like 1920, I fully just transitioned over to just to be in Flex all the time. So that was that cocky, arrogant, you know, person who walked through the door. But it was truly never, never me. It was just me being, you know, pretending to be that way. I mean, um, I remember <clears throat> Rico knew who I really was. I couldn't hide how from long, Rico. How long, I mean, Rico McClinton was, obviously, I know him as your training partner, but I know, you know, you guys are super close. How long did you know Rico for? Yeah, amazing story. So I met Rico back when I was 19. Um, we did the Teenage Black America, which sounds very racist right now. You know, in these days, but it, it was, was such a, a thing back then. Yeah, AAU. It couldn't happen today. No, nah, that's racist. Can you Come on, yeah. <laughs> that's like saying you know, white body, black bodybuilders can't, or Mexican bodybuilders can't compete. Can't compete yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it was AAU, right? Not even MPC. Uh, it was a teenage black yeah. America, and um, and Rico flew down. It was in Fresno, my hometown. And Rico flew in from LA. I drove in from LA, and I remember, you know, and being this tall, big dude with this massive afro. And I end up winning. It was only me and him in the category anyway, right? And I end up winning. And I remember him looking down at his trophy and kind of looking over at mine. I could tell he was full gangster. I could, you could feel that sauna, sauna, fasana, you know, fasana when you, you meet someone. And I remember looking at his trophy and looking over at mine. And I was thinking, I'm looking straight ahead like I could see you right now. And I'm looking straight mm -hmm. ahead like, this dude's about to take my fucking trophy. <laughs> 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 and uh, he just kept looking at mine and looking at his. I'm like, geez, he's really, he's really about to take my trophy on stage. I'm thinking of a movie Friday right now with Debo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Where's my bike? <laughs> and um, and we didn't see each other ever again. And then I went to California. Uh, and uh, geez, uh, the Mr. California. Is that 89 or? 89, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
and I, I it's my first time ever going to Ghost Gym, and it's just so crazy. I walk into Ghost Gym with my mentor, my best friend in the world, and he's everything to me, Ty McGuire, who got me into a high level of fighting, and he's the reason why I decided to go into full time bodybuilding. Shout out to Ty, but um. We walked in the gym and we're looking around and I'm like in awe like you were when you first come on man I'm like looking at the pictures and walls of greatness oh my gosh and watching just you at any time you'll see an A-list celebrity you know walk in or an Olympic gold medalist or anything like that you know Dennis Hopper walking around you know Gregory Hines and I'm like oh my god and literally Rico walk out of the second room into the first room they and didn't have the third room yeah yep, yep, yeah didn't have this third yeah, room yeah. back then so um he's coming through the 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 two big you know wide uh doors or whatever and i'm still standing at the gate haven't walked in yet and we make eye contact and we're staring at each other and he goes and i and i point but i'm like no way I'm like rico he goes flex he walked up to me gave me the, he goes man i heard about you i heard you wanted california blah 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 and we just clicked like that from that point on we were just inseparable um so yeah what a maiden story but yeah he's one of my closest friends in the world i mean you know like you said i was more flamboyant and flashy and all that but rico was always the leader of our team you know he didn't act it he didn't have to but he was uh with his confidence uh with his maturity me and rico uh, me and me and chris would we would have easily hurt each other and, and ended one of our careers you know i mean we would have fought and one of us would have like not been the same ever ever again um, but Rico was just so calm. Me and R Chris would get in an argument and Rico would just stand in between. It was like, you know, you're right, you're wrong, you know, cut it out and just walk away. And at that point, you know, I feel like, a, I feel ashamed of myself cause he's right. You know what I mean? And me and Chris kind of look at each other and just, you know, turn around and walk away. But he was always the leader of our camp. What's Rico up to nowadays? Acting and, and uh, freaking um, directing. Yeah, the guy is just off the still chain. Still in the gym. I see him at Gold's really? Venice when I go yeah. sometimes. He still he's has there. a few clients, yeah. but he's massive in the acting and, and awesome. teaching, acting, and, and, and producing and editing and stuff like that. He's he's actually, um, him and his team are redoing the famous uh, bibliological uh, movie, um, Hercules, right now. Uh, the new version, like if Hercules didn't live right now. But, yeah, so proud of him, man. But, yeah, he, he's that that's always you know everybody knows rico's character he's funny you he's know witty you like know what that. though he i remember you guys razzing him when i came in there at 22 years old and won the tournament of champions because he was at still at that level yeah. like you guys were already pros yeah. right yeah you and chris yeah um you know he turned chris turned pro in 93 so when i came back in 95 Jeez, when i came back in 95 and i won that tournament of champions i remember you guys sit in the audience being like laughing and kind of razzing Rico like, okay, this is what you have to deal with, bro. Yeah, yeah. Because he was still on, still yeah. competing to try to get his card. Yeah. So how did that affect, I mean, how was that, you know, based on you and Chris, you know, earning pro status, being like super popular and him coming along, but not having a card, like still tr trying to get the card. Did like I, like I said, he was so, he was so mature it didn't bother him. I think he loved the sport more than me and, and Chris put together. Um, but I, you know, we went to we went to roles uh, for movies. We went to roles for commercials together, and he would always get it. He was just charismatic like that. And I remember there was one um, commercial uh, for football player, and you know, I actually played football, and you know, I was in my prime. I looked, you know, the part and everything like that, right? And Rico ended up getting it, and I'm like, and he lied. You know, so they like, you know, every person state where you played, how long you play and this, that and other. So everybody's rattling off, blah, 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 blah all American, just that and other. Yeah, yeah. I rattle off mine and Rico was like, where I played doesn't matter. What matter is I played and I played well. And I'm like, you bastard, you. <laughs> and he gets it. And I remember telling him like, Rico, man, you know, and it was really hard for me. I was in tears, but I'm like, Rico, you know, I don't. I don't think this bodybuilding thing is meant for you. Why? Man, acting. Though, why, why? I know, but what, was he a good bodybuilder is my question. He was a decent bodybuilder, but his charisma, his, his charisma and yeah. his personality spelled acting. And he always got roles. He was loud in the gym. Yeah. Yeah. He was always loud. And I think he kind of was like your ringleader of, like you said, he kind of handled you guys. Yeah. Both, right? he, he, he was, we, we were all kind of loud in our own different way and everything like that rico was just different but it's just maturity i mean i i even remember you know uh, one story and this is his maturity so um i could never leave like the house without having like 10 grand in my pocket 
They're just knocking on okay. the door next. It's some, they're doing something with the walls next. Okay. I was like, is there someone out the front door? Yeah, I, I don't see. I don't see nothing. I know my vision ain't good, but so um, so Rico always had this this Datsun two ten uh, two ten or two eighty or whatever. Car, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This, and it was yeah. like he was so heavy and it was Leaning. so old. It leaned to the side. Yeah, and we'd yeah. drive and it'd be going like this. And I'd be so embarrassed of being in his car, and it's like food crud all at the bottom. That's how deep he was in the game, like making his own meals and food all stuck in a corner and stuff. And I'd be like, I'm like looking around, and he'd like he's driving, and he would hit at the hardest looking girl. She could be in a, like a Bentley, and he's freaking, you know, leaning out his car. Just is it starting to get too bad? No, you're good. Okay, um, ignore me. He, uh, yeah, uh, he would still hit on a dame. And I'll be like, I'm hiding like good grief, man. I don't want to be seen here. And uh, I couldn't leave the house without thousands and thousands of dollars in my pocket, you know, and, and, and whatever fancy car. And, you know, I remember we were driving down Beverly Hills uh, in Hollywood and, you know, speaker blaring and an SL500 right when they first got him. Good grief. Where is that? Next door? Yeah, they're redoing the wall, I guess. Oh, great. That's fucking ridiculous. Will will it pick up or no? I don't know. Maybe a little bit. Okay, we we'll keep, keep talking. Yeah. What are you gonna do about it? Make him stop? <laughs> hey, could you stop doing that? Hey, could you eat a dick for me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, you should go tell him. You should not say, guys, we're filming a podcast. Give us like 30, 40. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is loud. Good grief. I know you. They has the uh, noise cancellation, but god dang, that's so yeah, powerful. Yeah, yeah. You can feel it. I just want to say how proud I am of you. You know, it, it doesn't matter ti- titles or, or anything like that. Just what you've done inside and outside of bodybuilding, man. I, I always brag about you. Um, you know, I, it's such an honor to know you and, and you're cool with me. You know, you give me advice as a few times we sat down and you like try to give me advice and stuff. So just I really appreciate that, Jay. Uh, thank um, you, man. So. Rico's hitting on his girl, and, you know, like I said, we're in my fancy car. And uh, I know that almost every day I'm trying to kill myself. And we're just driving, and uh, I just look at him, like I have tears in my eyes. I'm like, wow, Rico, money don't make you happy, huh? And he's like, geez, Flex, finally, man, you're learning. And it's just, you know, coming from just being just ass poor, you know, hungry, wearing hand-me-downs, wearing clothes that, you know, you can't wash them every day. So your clothes stink and your stock, your socks can damn near stand up on their own because, you know, you, you don't take your shoes off at school because it smells so bad. And um, and then getting to where you make money, I just I still had no self-esteem. So I would buy all these crazy things, you know fancy cars or had to had to have one of the finest girls around my arm or girls you know at the time i had a seven-story house that ed sold me in venice and you know i had two two hundred thousand dollar cars in my garage with a harley and i'm still in my house Not trying happy. to yeah still in my house firing literally firing my gun you know trying to get used to uh taking my life and uh you know, the one thing that I thought would bring me happiness would be money because I didn't have it and it didn't. And that's when I realized, you know, if you're not happy with that, ain't no woman, ain't no money going to make you happy. I know, but, th- I mean, you had friends around you, like, but you I didn't, they didn't by tell yourself, them. right? And, I mean, did you talk to people nah, about this or? Not then, no. I think re- Like, you put on such a good act, though. I mean, you go to the gym every day, and you'd be in the gym twice a day training. Was the gym an outlet for you for it was an outlet. Or? It was an outlet, and it was a place where I didn't think about harming myself. As soon as I'd walk out of the gym, I'd become destructive, you know, where there's just, like, freaking... I remember I gave Mickey Rourke a, a ride in my uh, 930 slant nose, and him not knowing it, he's just thinking it's fun, but I was just reckless, so I'm driving in between Go's Gym and houses around there, like at you know 140, 150, freaking car drifting. More or less, I'm driving like that because I don't care about my life. And what did he think? Oh, he still texts me this day, man. I still remember that I pissed myself. You really? Know? Yeah, because he's thinking it's fun, but he's not understanding the mental. You know, uh, that you weren't really in control. Who is? And see, you know, Jay, I don't know about you, but I'm like a massive control freak. 
Yeah, I don't know about it's you. It's a Leo. Matt. It's a Leo thing. Dude. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a Virgo, right? Oh, I'm, okay, I'm on so a cuff. Yeah, I'm yeah, on a yeah, cuff. Yeah. So I'm even more messed up, right? I think I'm a virgin, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I think I'm a fighter, right? <laughs> um, but when you're really, if you're truly a control freak, you try to control everything. Your smile, how I am, am walking in in public, where I'm standing up straight, my relationships, business. But the truth is, we're not in control of shit, and we're aware of it, which makes us kind of control it even more. And we can't, so we try to control even more. That's the the downfall of a true control freak, because, you know, I always understood, you know, I could be in a car and I could slam on my brakes, but I don't have control of my car. Hey, bro. I'm like... Yeah. So I, I got it. You're walking in like that, man. I'm about to grip up on my shit, yeah. like, son. <laughs> so I, I hear you. They shoot a video. You put a sign outside. Yeah. I, oh, okay. I have the sign. It's on my hip. Yeah. I just Thanks, show it to them when they come through the door. Hey. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we leave that in there, by the way. That's you the man. man loves it. I think he walks in on every yeah. podcast. Oh, my gosh. So I got a question. So yeah. at what point did you realize that you had these insecurities? And that you might have had a, some mental health issues. Because yeah. I remember reading your book. And yeah. you, was that the first time where yeah. you really. That's like, the first time I let every that out. What gave you that type of confidence to say, I'm not just going to talk about it. But I'm going to put it out publicly in a book so everybody sees my dirty laundry. Right, right. So the answer to the first question, when did I realize it? I think the time that you have to try to put on a facade or act differently, you have to realize it, right? In order for me to tell a lie, I have to realize what the truth is. Therefore, that's the reason why I'm changing that. So it's like, it's funny when people lie, it's like, I don't care if you lie, you can't lie to yourself. And soon as you lie, you've already accepted that you know what the truth is, right? So that's the answer to that. As soon as I started trying to put on a facade, I realized who I really was. Um, when I started trying to identify and wanting to change, it's like when I found out that I had this kidney disease that was going to take my life and we didn't know how long I'd be here. And um, Rico had already had gave his life back to God and he changed right in front of me. Like within like a year, you know, he just slowly start clicking off at things, not cussing, not wanting to go out, not want to hang out, not, not want to chase girls. And it profoundly affected me because this is my like this is my dog man we traveled the world together we've done everything together we fought we hurt people we we help people um so i remember asking him one day you know what's going on with you man it's like nothing I'm like no tell me what's going on with you and i can understand him thinking like i can never tell flex this this dude is so far off the chain like you know god can't help him nobody can help this dude because he's so full of himself and I kept harping him, and he goes, fine, man, I, I start going to church, all right? And I was like, cool, man, you know, I want to go. And he goes, no, nah, it's okay. Because it's like he thought I was BSing. And the bad part about it, I was raised in church. Rico never seen a church. But when he grafted, he just didn't. He Just like bodybuilding, acting, everything else, he didn't deviate from that game. And he affected me so tremendously. I started going to church, and I start restudying the Bible. And, um, and, and I'm not a Bible thumper now. I don't beat nobody over the head with my, my beliefs. I, my beliefs are my beliefs, and you can have yours. They don't change mine. You know, bless you, whatever yours are, but I'm good with mine. You can say anything you want. I'm so, I'm, my faith is unbreakable, you know, and, and I don't need to walk around like. That's the way it should be. Yeah, it's Superman. So um, when we're kids, we're normally introduced to church, but we don't understand Come on, man. We got testosterone running through us. We got thoughts. I mean, come, we can't share that. And they don't talk about that in church. So we don't feel comfortable. So we immediately go into hiding and live in a double life, right? Go to church, whatever mom or whatever dad says, you know, or Easter or Christmas. They forced us to go. You know? Yeah. So as an adult going back and looking at this, I had a different understanding. And, you know, just really quickly, if you listen to anyone, any of these great people like Adam or, or anyone in the Bible, they went through horrific things. You know, one guy was willing to take his son's life. He was on a downstroke when God said, stop. You have kids. Anybody who have kids, could you ever have the power to take your child's life because God said so? Come on, I'll be like, mm, sorry. You know, and so... Anyway, my, my point was, 
reading all these stories and finding all these people had such massive setbacks. I was like, okay, I'm normal. I got a shot of being a decent person. You know, just because I have issues doesn't define me of being the issue. You know, just because I, I, I do these bad things, they don't define me. So the difference between, in my understanding of Christianity, we're no better than nobody else. Nine times out of ten, we struggle harder because we know right from wrong. We just ask for forgiveness and try to change. Before, it was my way, it was my way, the highway, or get out of here. It was my team, make it happen the way I want, whether there's relationships or anything else. Guys mm -hmm. or girls, it's me. If you don't want to get on this train, you can easily get off. Not a problem. And if you got an issue with that, let's make it happen. That was me. Now I understand. I didn't do nothing. It was him allowing me to. I'm, 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 I'm orchestrating in a world that he created. Just like anybody who has a child, we, you know, if you have a son, you dream of them being aspirations of a great athlete or a great person. We already designed our child's lives, right? Sometimes even before we have a kid. Yeah. What do you think he doesn't? He his but, own life to live. Too. Yeah, but he gives us the ability to change. And the truth is, any child does that. So anyway, that's a long answer to it. So to that story, that's when I started realizing. And that's what gave me the strength to write my book. So did you, so how did that process happen? Did you say, I want to put this out there? Like, how did that happen where you took it and put it on paper and published it? So I really got to look at this guy. I mean, he whooped me on stage so bad, <laughs> you know, and now he's just standing there smiling, you know, in that damn pose. What's this? He's looking it's at torture. Me, Jay. He's looking at this. Yeah, it's just torture. And he put it right in front of me. How can you have it on this side over here? No, I'm just kidding. But uh, um, well, you beat me a lot more than I beat you. Let's put it that way. Uh, I'm in your place. You're not in mine. Anyway, uh, so how did this happen with the publisher? To, you know, did someone. To, yeah, someone, someone approached you? me. Someone say, "Hey, I was tell at, your um, story." And then, is that some deep? That's deep, deep shit. It's it's deeper than that because. Me and Rico had met at 19. We built this worldly relationship that was unbreakable. He's the reason why I met the, the girl who gave me my kidney transplant because I, right? I went back to church. Yeah. God knew that when he set us, when he, when he had us meet each other at 19. Plan, yeah. He already had that in plan. I just had to do my part, right? Mm -hmm. And when it came to that, I met the girl who saved my life and the reason why I'm here now. Same thing with, with, with the book. I was just at some event in California one of my sponsors and this guy walks by and he does something that every you probably heard a billion times wow man you should have a uh uh you know a phone number nine eight hundred big guns and i'm like beat it get out of here you know <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean like like you know they say it every week i fly through they're like oh you carry and you get those guns in here and i'm like dude i'm 49 years old <laughs> <laughs> um but I'm like, beat it. And he walks by and he comes back and he's like, no, serious. You know, you should write a book. I'm like, get out of here, man. You know, and it was like a three-day event. And every day he would come and say something to me. And to the last day, he came and just gave me his card. You know, he told me, you know, he, he worked at Hay House as my uh, publisher back then. Um, he told me that he worked for him and represented him. And he goes, man, you know, you should really write a book. I'm like, dude, you don't know me. You don't know nothing about me. N neither would anybody else care to know nothing about me. But truly, it was meant to be. He didn't know my story at all. He just said he just felt something about me. And he gave me his business card, and I would blow him off. Like like every Christmas, he would like send me a, a postcard. Hey, Flex, Merry Christmas or Happy Birthday. You know, you ever consider that? And um, it was right during that time where I started going back to church and with Rico and everything. Um, and he contacted me again. And at the time, Robin was still my manager, and I told Robin about it. And uh, he goes, you know, I sent Robin uh, the, the paperwork, and Robin was like, you know, man, they, they're going to pay you up front. You know, take that. And I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to lie. I ain't going to tell you. He goes, well, wait, you're not going to tell the truth, Flex? I'm like, come on, Robin, you know me. You know me better than anyone. You've been around the world with me. I can't tell the things I've done. Are you kidding me? I'd be ruined. He's like, Flex. Don't do it. I go, do you see the amount of money they're offering me right now? He goes, you'll be ruined. You'll never make another penny. I'm like, get out of here, Robin. What are you talking about? He's like, flex every country, every backyard boogie that you've been to that you don't lie, that you don't tell the truth about in your story, you're ruined. And I, I have so much respect for Robin. I was just broken. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I'm like, this is 2003. I ain't like pulling in the big dough like I was then. I'm like, yeah. and I just, I'm like, okay. 
and during that transitional stage of going to church and everything like that, I, I got the strength to be able to tell the truth. And I recontact them. I'm like, okay, let's do it. You know? And then also, because that's the last book I actually, I read the whole book in, that's a long time ago, what, 19 yeah. years ago? I remember in the book, you said your father-in-law, the first time he ever heard of any of this is when he read the book. Yeah. What was that? And I know a lot of people aren't going to understand this. What was that conversation like with him? Because you talked about stuff with your wife and this and this. Yeah, like, yeah. What was that conversation like? Yeah. Um, everyone in my entire life tree was the first time they found out anything. The only person who knew some of that was uh, the uh, mother of my first son, my first wife, uh, Levita. You know, because we started dating when I was like, geez, 14. So she knew the truth when everybody thought I, um, I overdosed on uh, aspirin as an accident. She knew the truth because I told her mm -hmm. what I tried to do. Um, and she knew partially everything up to, to that age category. So no one else knew nothing. Uh, my mother, my father, uh, no one did. And uh, their response, because I didn't use anyone's real name because it was about outing me. So if I talked about a girl, the only way you would know is because you had to know me during that time date because I used names like Medusa and Matilda because it wasn't about embarrassing or mm -hmm. outing anyone else. That's, that's not good to, to you know, cut somebody else's backyard. So they were just angry. Uh, they were angry. They, they knew who the women were who molested me and they wanted to go and hurt them. And I was like, God, ah, it's behind me. Forget about it. You know? Um, but they were just, they're devastated. I mean, I mean, I have kids now and she's uh, how, how would you handle that? You know, you're, you're 12 or 13 year old kid telling you, you know, 10 years later that their whole life, they've been trying to take it as a parent. What would you do? They, they were devastated. My brothers and sisters were angry. They wanted to take vengeance on the people who had hurt me and that had beat me up and stuff like that. And then, unfortunately, I out some of them on what they'd done to me. You know what I mean? And they apologized. You know, the, the truth is, you know, I, I didn't get it then, but I'm just weird. Like, siblings, who, who should you love more? Who should be more protective? Not them beating the sh out of you. That's just not me. You know, I got younger brothers and. I would hurt anyone who ever tried to touch them. I never laid a hand on them, you know, but my siblings, it was just an aura where they would just hand you your ass and laugh about it. They would literally, I mean, you know, Dino and Charlene, my, my older brother and older sister, they would literally beat me up, bloody me up, and they would videotape it. And it was fun. And they'd play it for the family, you know, but I was just so different. It struck me differently. It affected me deeply. You know, and I didn't think nothing was fun about it. I thought, you know, who should be protecting me? Not within my own home, but to them, they didn't think of a big deal. Now they laugh about it and we talk about it and they, they're like, yeah, sorry, we didn't know that it affected you like that or else we would have never done it. But come on, how many brothers beat their younger sibling up? But it doesn't affect all of us, you know, differently. Were you beat up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the youngest of seven, dude. So. so you got your ass yeah, handed by a lot of people. Three sisters, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was that was like I said, that was the last book that I yeah. I, read. I remember reading it and just was like, holy shit, because you know I didn't know you or yeah. No, I met you before that though. You yeah, know, I don't remember the first time we met. And actually, my ghostwriter Cindy, um, she lives here in L.A. and she would contact me like, like every like five or six years flex oh my god especially after the the uh um i lost my legs she's like oh my god we got to write another book i'm like cindy i can't do it you know she goes we got to you have to you know more has happened to you in the last 15 years than your entire 20 something years up to that book and um you know especially now i'm losing my leg you know we we talk about it but even then you know she would just record we would talk and she would just record for hours and it would be sometimes where she'd be like i gotta go and she'd just hang up on me because she would just be a mostly a train wreck or i would be like i can't i gotta stop so i'm like it's gonna be three times worse now and she goes flex you, you owe it you have an obligation where you have to do it now so we're working on it now because there's other people that could hear that and get strength from it. And that's all I want to do. I know it's an yeah. old, stupid cliche. I know everybody says it, but I just, I truly, truly just want to help people, especially people who are dealing with mental issues, you know, people 
who have a disease that, that there's no cure to, that, that's always trying to take your life. You know, people who are suicidal, you know, people who've been homeless and, and sexually abused. I mean, you know, who, you know, I come from the hood, I come from the ghetto, and the first thing we'll say to you, dude, you don't know what it's like. You don't know what my life is. Get out of here or I'm going to hurt you. But there's honestly, there's honestly no hat that I can't wear. I can wear a hat of a millionaire. I can wear a hat of a homeless person. I can wear a hat of a, a, a of abusive person, a person who've abused people and been abused. I can hand, wear the hat of being sexually abused, homeless, on welfare. You know, I, I can wear all the hats that you can imagine. And and and, and you know, I honestly, I, I, I not in a bad way, but I, I'm proud that I was able and and able to go through these things because only now can I help those people. You know, being a, a great athlete and having this like mythological body. Um, I always used to look at people who lost a limb and you always wonder, you know, you kind of glance like, and you wonder what's their story. How did that happen? Oh my God, how, how bad must that be? I'm that guy now. So immediately, like when kids or anyone look at me and I see them kind of staring, I'll say hi to them quickly. Hey, how you doing? Kind of to break that ice and let them, it's okay. Kids, I'm like, you know, Hey, you want to touch it? It's Okay. You know, adults, I'll joke, I'm like, hey, you want one? I can get you one. It's going to be painful, but I can make it happen, you know? So I just want to help people. And I could never, never help a person who has a rare disease that there's no cure for it unless I have one. I could never help transplant patients unless I became one. I could never talk to or be in a genre of, of, of transplant, I mean, uh, and, uh, uh, people who lost a limb unless I became one. So I really feel honored that I, I have all these things that I've been through that I can now turn around and help people. And, you know, like I was saying off camera, I don't, I don't know where my medallions and awards are. I'm very embarrassed about it. You know, I, I don't know where my, you know, Olympia, Olympia medallions. And I, I got my honor classic trophies because they're so massive. You know, I can't just like lose them. But I don't know where anything else is. I, I, the money, all my cars, they're all gone. Money, I burnt it, made it, burnt it, made it, whatever. None of that you have, you know, but there's a saying, you know, you can say something to someone, they'll forget that eventually. But how you make them feel, they'll never, never forget. Yeah. So is there a lot of memories in bodybuilding, like, that you sit and, like, I still think about, like, my 09 comeback of beating Ronnie Coleman for the first time. And uh, how did you feel it, when it Or is it just a distant memory? Uh, you know, dude, I felt bad for Ronnie. Yeah, I can you know, tell. so so when I won, and it was know, hard for you to enjoy it. I remember it looking at you on yeah, stage, and, and I, you couldn't even kind of. He's turned face towards you, he, and I'm angry. I'm angry at him at the time, and I know I'm cutting you off. I'm angry at the time because Ronnie always said, "Hey, this is meant to be. This is meant to be. So if it's meant to be, then if you lose, it's meant to be." And I remember when I was walking up on stage because I was handing out one of the trophies. Uh, sure, and, and Ronnie, had, uh, as I was walking upstairs, he's like, man, I didn't win. And I just remember going silent on him. And then I remember how his conduct was. He was standing towards you, not even the audience, where everyone else, including you, stand towards the audience, looking, gazing, blah, blah, blah. I took it on a chin. Damn it. Okay. You know, and I... I, I I know that feeling because I know when Ronnie met me, I made it a point to make him feel okay. I gave him a big hug. Man, I love you. You know, and I jokingly said, hey, I'm not going to be at your party. You know, and he's like, I understand. Because why would I go to his party and be humdrum when it's the happiest moment for him? And, you know, so I remember you standing there and, and, and I, I, I can feel like, you know, I like this weird vibe towards you. I can feel your uncomfortableness, even though you try to put it off. I think only people who are like that can see that in other people. And I remember you standing there, you know, and you kind of like, and you kind of glance over and you're standing there. And I was like, wow, that got to be an uncomfortable feeling to, to finally have made the epitome of what you want. And a person that you had the greatest dog fights with is, uh, is like not comfortable. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, you, we, there's very few that stood for that one, two count. You did it several occasions on the Olympia level, right? And the funny thing is, is like he knew, so he actually yeah. told. He's like, "You won, you beat me." So he was voice. You can see him like yeah. saying stuff to me. And you're like, "Come on, man!" So I'm like, yes. "I'm like, damn, yeah, like, okay, how do I enjoy this victory? Because I just shattered this guy's dream of record breaking nine, beating Lee Haney's record, right? Right. And 
I'm going to be the first ever, right, yeah. to, to actually do this. Yeah. And I remember saying after the show, this was like a respect to you and Sean and Kevin and everyone that couldn't break that right. position, Rich Gaspari. Right. And I said, okay, let me enjoy this moment. I'm not going to fall on the floor like he does every year, mm. and I'm going to, you know, congratulate him. And, of course, you know, the announcement was made. So it was like an amazing moment. But, you know, winning it was – just like wow you know i i did win it and then eventually i tell people now like i remember sitting around and it was amazing for the first couple of weeks and i just expected so much more i remember you doing that interview and the first time here and you say something like that like is that it like because you reached that pinnacle remember flex i mean i i started training at 18 i had a vision at 12 of bodybuilding i followed chris dickerson and then at 16 i bought bob harris's book beyond built and then you know walking in and seeing lucky you you could read damn it no <laughs> you know for, no listen for for you you know walking in and seeing you know the likes of yourself and and some of the greats mike christian everybody that yeah. was you know that i got to meet gary stridham i got to meet at the time and and uh just wanting to be great and i never thought i'd be that good you know i wear i know like I look back at like Arnold and he's like, I had to plan to be the greatest bodybuilder. Then I plan to be the governor. Then I mm. plan to be the best actor mm. there is. Right. Mm. Uh, but I didn't have that vision. Mm. My vision was like, man, if I can make a couple bucks doing this um, and actually pay for my gym membership. And then I, here I am being the greatest in the world at what I did. Um, but I just wondered with you, like, you know, you were, you were second, you won all these Arnold's, you know, in 99, you know, I remember you walking and facing the curtain, like, okay, how am I going to handle this? Especially yeah. after 98, like, those were the two years I felt like, you know, you, you had the run and then you had, the, you know, a couple where you fell off in, yeah. after 96. And then 97, yeah. you you didn't do compete. So 98, it was supposed to be Flex Wheeler's year yeah. Yeah. in Madison Square Garden, yeah, the biggest stage of them all. And then Ronnie Coleman comes from the back and he beats you mm -hmm. and you know, you're still like, okay, I'm going to come back and you're motivated to win this thing again. And, and it seemed like 99 was like the final straw for you. Like I remember yeah. you had to, you kind of had to like capture yourself for a second because I wasn't sure how you were going to act. You took the medal off. Yeah. Talk yeah. about that moment a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, no. So um, what was your emotions? Like, I mean, well, first I never believed I could win Olympia. Um, I won the Arnold. And I won the Ironman, my first shot. So I always had confidence I could repeat that. And, you know, I hadn't ran up against anybody who could beat me. You know, um, you know, Labrada was ranked number two in the world and Vince was ranked number two. So my, my first outing, I beat, you beat the number two guys. guys yeah. And then my second outing, I beat both of them. So I'm like, man, I'm hot. Who, who can touch me? And then I end up, you know, going and winning two more pro shows and, you know, that put me in a Guinness Book of Record for having a best pro debut in the history. But then I ran up against Dorian. And I, 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 I'm not a liar to myself. I just can't do it. I have belief to a certain degree in my abilities physically, um, but I'm not a liar. And I knew, uh, you know, when I stood next to Dorian, it was the first time that I felt someone else's presence next to me. That's the aura that he had and the space that he took up. And I remember just standing there, and I could feel this effing guy next to him. And I'm like, that's very effing unnerving. It's like meeting one of the strong mans, and they're like, you know, six, seven, and their hand fully engulfs <laughs> yours. <laughs> it just fear. makes you feel inferior. Like, you, you're just in a way, <laughs> you know. So anyway, um, so he won. And, um, you know, I didn't really care because I was so green. I was just happy to be on stage. I didn't know the history of the Miss Olympia. I didn't know anything. But, you know, when it came to to Ronnie, you know, we were already really, really close friends. Ronnie would stay at my house getting ready for Olympia and stuff like that. And um, in 1998, 90, uh, I knew I didn't put everything into it. And I was really ashamed of myself when I finally got on a stage. I just, I questioned myself. I was like, dude, why, why don't you believe you can be number one, you know? If it was the Iron Man or the Honor Classic, I'm like, you're in my house. You know, you're going to have to come take this. Good luck. But the Olympia, I always would wire myself like, okay, I'm going to shut second down. And I think it was a flaw because my first time at the Olympia, I was second. Second, yeah. And, you know, that's what I identified to. Um, but in 98. Um, I mean, Dorian sat out, right? Yeah, so my name tired. was literally on a trophy. And I remember it was, it was so much pressure. And I didn't deal with pressure well then. Because uh, there was the magazines were very, 
outgoing by saying my name was on a trophy already who's going to beat me because you're right doing it set out and i'm the next in line even though i wasn't the second place winner at the time you know my who was uh so i, I think it was either uh, nasser or uh, sean or maybe kevin it was one of those three okay. second 97 that was in long beach oh yeah was it right. nasser? i don't remember i think it was nasser yeah yeah so but anyway um he should have won yeah it was nasser it was nasser that was a yeah oh, yeah that was, that the was year. one of the years yeah, yeah. So, um, anyway, so I, uh, I lost to him by three points mm -hmm. and I was like three points and I'm off and he was on good grief. I remember him doing his posing. Yeah. yeah oh God. I think he surprised everybody, including the world, just a condition and a size has never been seen before. Right. I remember him posing and he was never even a, in a call out with me during prejudging. And I remember thinking to myself, I, I'm always honest. I'm like, that's not right. This, this guy deserves to be up there with us. I'm not saying he deserves to beat me, but I'm like, he deserves to be in a call out with us. And he's posing and like, you know, doing his abdominal pose. And I'm looking at his back and I'm like, wow, they always talk about how feathered my back is. I'm like, his is more. Mm -hmm. And his lower erectors are more. And, you know, I remember doing the most muscular and I'm looking at him like, what's wrong? If they recognize who this guy is, this a rap, you know, and, we end up taking a taxi back together. Um, you know, he's like, man, you know, Joe Weider knows my name. And I'm like, of course he does. He goes, no, Flex, you got to remember, I turned pro before you. I've been competing as a pro. This guy's never even acknowledged to me. I just did a photo shoot with him. I'm like, well, cool, man. You know, great. So ironically, we end up taking a taxi back to the Olympia. And he's like, man, Joe signed me. I'm like, good. Because he signed me, man. I'm like, good for you, Ronnie. Damn, you deserve it. Yeah, everything changed that night. Good grief, you know. <laughs> like I said, he wasn't even in a call out with me. So, you know, when he got to, uh, you know, the comparisons, they brought him up. And I, I already felt his presence. I knew how good he was, but I didn't think that was going to happen. And, you know, uh, he ended up winning the pose down round and the posing round. And I'm like, How's that happen? How's that happen when I'm I, I supposed to be considered one of the greatest poser at that moment? And, you know, as great as Ronnie is, posing ain't one of his great strengths. So, but I understood business wise, that's the only way he could make up those points and come and get me. So I'm like, all right, three points. I was off. I, you know, I can, I can make that up. So, you know, I end up putting on 17 pounds, which is unheard of, a pure muscle walking back in on stage. I was in better shape. And I'm like, it's, it's a wrap. You know, I just knew, I'm like, nobody can get with this. And back then, we were brutally honest with each other backstage. When you peeled your clothes, if you won, back then, they'd walk over like, congratulations, you got it. You know, your peers would, whoever, Dex, not Dexter, Sean, Nasser, whatever, Paul, we would just walk up to the person, shh, you got it. And I remember Ronnie sitting over in the corner, and everybody's like, congratulate me, everything, and we're making kind of eye contact. We're friends, but come on, this is time for battle. You know what I mean? So we don't say nothing to each other. We go up, we do our battle. And he perfect scores me. You know, at the time, I didn't know. Well, yeah, I kind of knew, you know, uh, what the scorecard was. But uh, I knew he had won. And I'm like, and here's an example. How many times have you both been at a show, a person wins, and a person takes second? The person at one is, like, jumping through the roof. The person who took seconds. Yeah. And they say, oh, wait a minute. We made a mistake. And a changer, and all of a sudden, the person who was winning or won is now just floored. The person who was floored now they're like on top of the world. What changed? Nothing, mm -hmm. other than the knowledge of the judges. And I remember thinking at all, like you know, time just slowed down, uh, slowed down for me. And I was like, No, nah, man, I worked my ass off. I did everything right. No, these say, no, I'm not, I'm not wearing these. I'm because you think I am. I'm number one. I know that in my heart. I'm number one. I gave everything. I know I am. I know I won the show. You're not going to, not going to make me feel like I'm number two because you say so. And, um, you know, and that was my thought. I thought you were going to freak out. No, that I was, was my first, that was my first Olympia flex. I oh, was really? 15 out of 16. God dang. 99. Jeez. No, it was not, it was not, nothing to be angry about. Right? It's nothing to be angry about. It's a subjective sport. You know, we're men here. And uh, say 
two twins walked through the door and, and for some reason we all thought the one on the right was just the most finest but they're yeah, identically yeah. it's the presence it's your feeling how you feel about that person it's Nobody's not like wrong for their feeling yeah so how can i be mad at anyone and, and especially the gentleman on stage they're just trying to do like i'm trying to do they're trying to win and make money and change their positioning why would i be mad at this person so, you know, that's, I went over and I, I, you know, Ronnie was on the floor and I just whispered in his ear, man, congratulations, I love you. And he said, thank you. And I'm like, by the way, man, you know, joking, I'm not going to be at your party tonight, <laughs> you know, and that was it, you know, um, and I went back, uh, but it was nothing to be angry at nobody. I was more proud of myself that I finally believed in me. But did you, that was the year you signed the big contract with Biochem? Yeah, and did, 17 did, days before. Yes, yeah, so this is a question. Did, yeah. you, did you actually think politically? I didn't think it was possible. Okay. I didn't know they'd do it. I didn't know they'd do it. But you, you signed know, the biggest. Because Haney did it. You signed the biggest contract of the time. At, at that, that time. Point. Yeah. And, and, you know, and a lot of people say, man, why don't you just push that back 17 days? And I'm like, for one, I didn't think that was going to happen. Yeah. And I was on target of being the best version I ever was. Two, Really, I could have cramped up. Anything could have happened. You know, I mean, variables. come on. I'm like, I'm not. They offered me uh, a three-year deal uh, with, with the most pay that anyone had had during that time. They even included, like, you know, things I never heard of. You know, every place you go, you'll be in a, um, a suite hotel. Anywhere in the world we take you, you're going to be in a suite. You I know, heard of it at the time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, every flight you take will be first class. You know, anything you want to eat and everything. I never heard of that. Three years guarantee. We was just offering us a year to year. Yeah, and it was coach flight. It was coach flight. It was a billion appearances. And I was like, well, <laughs> you know, so how do you turn that down? No, and he goes, no, can't. we want to treat you like a real athlete I'll that you are. I'll never forget, bro. I went to the <laughs> FIBO show. I went to FIBO, which is was the biggest yeah, show in is. Germany. Yeah. yeah. And I remember you had a fold up like director's chair and it said flex wheel <laughs> on the back and that was your signing chair. And I'm like, holy uh, shit, flex has <laughs> made it. Yeah, they just took care. It was crazy. And, um, and, I, and they I, only wanted three appearances for me a year. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? Yeah, we only want three. And I'm like, I was so nervous to come over and talk to you too. Uh, and you had all the, the biochem guys. They became my good buddies. Yeah, Brian yeah, and Ryan and I, yeah, 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 He had a Drexler yeah, family. Uh, God bless. Um, yeah, Brian Cazuto and yeah. those oh, guys. Brian. Yeah, I still yeah. talk to yeah, yeah, Brian. Yeah. Brian is great. Brian saved my life so many times because me and Ryan would get into it. And he's like, bro, yeah. don't argue with yeah. him. I'm like, why? He's just a man like me. He goes, hey, he writes you a check. I'm like, who gives a gem? I'm an athlete. He goes, don't do it. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, that was just great. And, uh. Well, you went. I mean, were you on top? Like, you finally like got respect in my eyes. Then, right? right? I mean, to get paid, like yeah. that was like that was the first. And Jimmy like, helped give me that contract. Yeah. Jim Mannion called me because he they were looking for somebody, and he's like, you know, flex, you know, this company's looking. I'm like, Jimmy, I go, but I'm leave Weeder, and he goes, just talk to him, you know. And um, even now, I. I, I I couldn't go back on that, you know, and, and like I said, they only wanted three appearances. So I made this deal with them right then. I'm like, all right, I'll do three for you. But how about if you guys want me a fourth, fifth or whatever more than that, you just give me a thousand bucks. I was like, yeah, sure. We're not going to use you more than three. Thousand I doing, bucks. I end up doing like 20 and 30 appearances for, for a them thousand. a year. <laughs> <laughs> I get more than a thousand. <laughs> we're going to talk, talk to the manager about this. What do you think about a thousand? But remember, this is 99. 90, this, that probably was. But you were still listen, getting. Though. Listen, you were, you were listen. It was just 99. But they were, you know, I'm just being honest, but they were paying me 17 grand a month. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a lot of money. Compared that's about, to, you know, compared, that's compared, good money now. Back then, I mean, yeah. was fight, you were fighting to get five grand a month from Weeder. I, at I the was. Time, I right? barely got five grand a month from yeah. Weeder, and it was, it was, it was, it was, it was year to year based. This based was three year guaranteed, yeah. based on how your competitions yeah. went, right? And they agreed to the 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 paying me for more, so I ended up making like you know anywhere from twenty or thirty thousand just on appearances on top of my pay money. You know what I mean? So that's in, in all honesty, that's a good deal now. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially and, and now because twenty those, years ago, fuck. Who you don't even get those deals anymore. I don't even give it. I remember Ronnie asking me how much are they paying you, and I told him he goes, he goes, man, I went back in the door. I'm like, he goes, I'm Mr. Olympia. Flex getting paid more than me. I want more, and he goes because of that he got more money, and I'm like, well, you deserve it, man. You are Mr. Olympia. You I know? always say that that's the LeBron James effect. <laughs> when, the, when the top guy gets paid the most. Mm -hmm. 
or well, like if you do this deal, he should get more. And That's if true. he pushes it up, the guy that's just below you needs to come up below you. But if the top guy comes down to here, yeah. it, it fucks you, everything. and now you it, it screws her up. So he, the top guy has to push the envelope. Yeah. So so people talk about like, oh, Jay set the standard for contracts. I want to give you credit because I think you kind of set the standard. Did did Robin Chang negotiate that deal for you? No, no one did because he uh, was kind of your he, he, he was. was the original manager. You know, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It was Robin. And I don't know if he worked with other people, but he was your manager, kind of right. You want? Yeah, he was. He was my manager, my best friend. He was a godfather to my my kids. You know, we it was more than manager and actually I, I I he wanted to fire himself and he's like flex i can't be your manager anymore and i was like why and he goes well you just you just get deals now you know all i do is come. like look at the contract you know and i'm like i go now i need to pay you more he goes no you don't need to pay me anything i'm your friend i'll do it for free i go that's why now i need to pay you more because you look after me and i can't pay someone enough i'm dyslexic i don't understand nothing i could read like a third year old a uh, third grader and you read these contracts and you protect me you don't take money from me you're the godfather to my kids you're my closest friend in the world i made it because of you and your help how could i not now reward you like i'm being rewarded mm -hmm. at the time i had the highest paid uh clothing company from california where mm -hmm. yeah i was making like four grand a month from them back then and you know i was all so no they just offered it to me. Their thing was, is they, I want to treat you like an athlete, like all other athletes are treated. And that was normal, right? For pro athletes to get a first class somewhere or, or, or a suite. That was like, that was like a joke. Like now, if you get an appearance, you know, of course you're going to pay my way. Of course you're going to pay me. And of course you're going to apply. That's not even a question. You know, that was normal. So it was non-negotiable. They just came out and, and they knew that they had to do more than what we were doing. So, and, and mathematically, they just tripled my pay a little bit more and gave me a three-year contract. And then while we were talking, you know, I think it's kind of like Ryan is so, like, that's him and his lifestyle, fancy cars and everything. He goes, yeah, yeah, you're going to be fine first class with me. And even when you're not, you're going to be first class. And, you know, I stay in suites, so you're going to stay in suites, you know what I mean? So, you know, just hearing you say that just makes me feel good because a lot of people don't recognize what, someone like I did or someone like Robin did behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of times we put our neck on, necks on the line. There's a lot of times we're the innocent bystanders yeah. and we're the one that takes the, the blow when it comes. And I was him fully. And Sorry. people don't recognize that. Like, you know how many times I'm caught in the middle of shit yeah. that I should And that's a be? manager's position. And Robin would always say, let me take the heat. We would, yeah. He was so incredible. We would be at a parents' somewhere and he'd be with me and he'd be like, that's so-and-so of so-and-so and this is their name and blah, blah, blah. And I wouldn't know nothing. Yeah. Hey, and I would just say it. And he goes, you know what? If there's ever a, a, a problem or, 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 or dismay, he would jump right in the middle. That's my fault. You know, I'll take that. So that you're supposed to do. I, I tell everyone I work with, you should never, nothing negative should ever come out of your voice. Right. Let it come from me. Right. And if someone, I, it's okay if they're mad at me. Yeah. You don't want them mad at you. Yeah. And, yeah. and a lot of people That's don't. the signs of a great manager. You know, and uh, what was that one movie uh, with Tom Cruise uh, when he was an agent? Uh, the, uh, with the little kid Impossible. in it. The, no, with the little kid. The, he was the agent. Player. Oh, no. It was, uh, it was with uh, the Gooding Jr. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, yeah. Well, yeah. Something Gooding Jr. was the, the base. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and, and me and that movie came out, it was like, I felt like... Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I felt yeah, like yeah. that was me and Robin. Yeah. And I remember I had to go and compete in the Honor Classic that year, and he couldn't make it. Yeah. Um, and I was just... Uh, I think it was... No, I think he made it, and, and my wife at the time couldn't make it. And, you know, she was like my rock, you know, competing, you know, like, like the women are uh, in our lives when we were competing. And it was just me and him. And I remember that movie, like, man, it's just me and you, man, you know. And, <laughs> and that's when he just fully took on a full role of everything, and I just laid back. All yeah. I had to do was just compete and just, you know, stay out of my own way. But you that's just funny. a sign even, of a great manager. Even when Jay and I will travel, sometimes something won't be. And he'll just give me that look. Like, and I you know, already he know. He doesn't like it. And I'm like, just, I'm going to take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> I just know, like you it's just sign. You know, you're you're the person that is in the line of fire between, yeah. it, it and they're comfortable in doing that. I think yeah. a lot of managers now, Matt, want to be a bit of a star too. Yeah, and they're not take they're not comfortable in letting a star is like a uh, Cat Williams said. You know, always know who your mother, you know, MVP is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And 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 now I think there's a huge problem. It's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that star bringing whoever assisted them or their team up with them as they should. They should. 
right? As they should, because they assisted them. But, you know, I think now sometimes, you know, that, that person want to have that same type of inoculation, and that's, that's wrong. You know, we all have to know our roles. I knew my role, and I know my role as an athlete and as a businessman. And, and as we say on the street, stay in your lane or you're going to get bent up. Yep. You know what I mean? So whether it's on the street, I'm in a little Yugo, and it's a, it's a diesel next to me, stay in my lane or else I'm going to get bent up. Or, you know, in business, I might be dealing with an 800-pound gorilla, you know, as we say in business. Stay in my lane, but it's for my manager role to jump out of his lane and put himself in harm's way to better or worsen that keep, keep position for him. And that's the reason why you should take care of them so well. But you now, I mean, you have athletes, right? I yeah. mean, you're doing a lot of things now. I want to talk a little bit about how, you know, a Just lot of people know you. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, especially this Andrew Jacked. Hmm. Like, this kid... I see some flex wheeler, by the way, with uh, the posing, right? And, <laughs> and I'm going to ask you, I'm going to put you on the spot because there's been a lot of questions about him lately. But, like, are you cons are you managing or are you advising beside, are you training? I mean, you're doing a so lot a of little, things based on your experience. Yeah, it's a little of all of them. And my role is 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 actually uh, now learning to pull back because he's so mature as a person. And, you know, I see it, and I've had other managers or helpers who, who wouldn't let me grow, and they always want, let, let me handle this for you. I'm like, no, no, no. I got that. We're okay. You know, you still are who you are to me, but I'm growing as a person. So I see him growing and elevating quickly. So like you say, you know, in one interview, I built his physique. You know, I don't really need help. My thing is, like, you did build that physique. I know, but how did but you find take, this kid? So interesting, you know, obviously we all seen him on the internet before. Yeah. And we seen him with Larry Wills and stuff like that. So I just kind of, you know, uh, clicked him as a friend and he accepted me. And we would chat like every once in a while. Or? Instagram. We would say something to each other like maybe every couple of years. And I remember talking to Dexter actually about him. And he's like, uh, man, you seen this Andrew Jack guy? And I go, yeah. And I go, he's a freak. I go, why aren't you training him? And Dexter goes like, why aren't you training him? I'm like, you're the one who freaking has a big training pot and everything. He goes, well, F you, Flex. He follows you. He don't follow me. And I'm like, what do you mean, Dexter? You got like 1.4 million followers. Yeah. I don't do you know who follows you. He goes, he don't follow me. He follows you. So I'm like, huh. So I just sent him this message on Instagram. I was like, you know, so what's your deal, man? You know, what are you doing? You, you, you want to be just. he wasn't bodybuilding. No. Was yeah, well, he was kind doing of doing these lower. Thing, yeah, these right? lower low. He did a couple of like lower local shows or whatever. Um. And I said, you know, what do you just, you, you want to be a freak? You know, what's your story, dude? You know, because I was kind of irritated because he, you could see this, his ability. Yeah. And um, he goes, you know, he says, it's great. You know, you, you call him. He goes, man, I just I always wanted to be the next Flex Wheeler. I'm like, well, let's get at it. You know, are you really serious about that? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, fly down here. Let's meet. You know what I mean? I go, because money is, it's, you can't pay me enough. Right. You know, because there's just certain talent and you know it. You're just taking her money. You know, and I just can't do it. I don't care how broke or rich I am. I just can't take someone else's money and their dream of trying to become and make a lifestyle like we have. If they don't have it, I, I can't do it. I'm like, yeah, you need to go to somebody else, man. I can't help you. You know what I mean? Uh, and on top of that, you're going to be a failure because you know they ain't going to But you saw it in this kid. Yeah, so I seen it, and um, he flew down. And Where? We met, uh, he, we flew, he flew here from uh, Dubai. Okay. Um, and we met at my house, and we sat and talked, and I just wanted to jump into his mental and um, we're going back and forth, and, you know, I'm liking what I'm hearing and everything. And, um, you know, I've been burned, you know, by a few athletes that I help. You know, we're cool now. I'm not going to say his name. He's like a little, like a little brother to me. Um, we get along great now. I mean, it's not really his fault. Somebody got into his ear. He's very young, and he listened to him, and he left the camp. You know, it really hurt me because I was like, actually, I was losing my leg at that time. And I was, I remember, yeah, yeah, I was, uh, it was a really a bad time for me financially. And I was about to lose my leg. And here it is. He jumped camp when I thought he was going to be like my shooting star to help people know that I'm a decent trainer. Anyway, um, so he brought that up. He's like, I'm not going to be that. And he goes, I got one favor to ask you. And I'm like, what? I'm like, here we go. You know, I'm like, here, he's about to say something to just to end everything. And uh, he goes, this guy has kind of been helping me all my life, even when I moved here from, from Nigeria. Can I kind of just still leave him as one of my coaches? And I just looked at him like, wow, you got that much respect that somebody helped you. They're not even contributing now, but they helped you before, and you still want to. I'm like, hell yeah, man. Let's go do this. Um, so, yeah, he's just a freak. You know, I mean, 
um, I have input on what I think, how he should train. And, you know, I'm really big on his, his posing. But what I bring to the table uh, for him is more the mental aspect of the game because you know it now, Jay. It don't matter what great talent you have, how strong your body, if you don't have it mentally. I love what you said because, you know, when I've met Phil Heath for the first time, that's when I figured out that he had greatness because mm-hmm. we actually sat at Cheesecake Factory and spoke. And I remember calling Peter McGuffin saying, this kid's got it. And he's got the body, but the mind is there, yeah. you know, and that's really what, and it's just, you know, when you sat there and tell me through this interview, like, I don't have confidence and, you know, I just wouldn't didn't necessarily believe in myself. How do you, how do you spill over like your faults and make someone believe like, Hey, you have it when they probably doubt themselves because listen, he, he, he was walking on stage in Texas, which he claims is 80% and you told yeah. him to go. Yeah, he could. He was on track to just do the Arnold UK, which yeah. we're going to be there and actually witness this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. You got it. We're going. Yeah, 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 yeah. we'll both be there. So, 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 yeah. so I can't wait because I haven't seen him in person. We shot him for JTV. I've yeah. never um, seen him in person either. And all I hear is great things. And uh, like I know. Okay, so you're giving him the the confidence, and it sounds like he's very confident. But um, I mean, you tell me, what is this kid? What's the potential? You know, um, I want I'm, you to I'm tell careful. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be, you're, you're careful. I don't. I don't want you to be careful, Flex. I, I, I mean, can I, he stand with the best in the world? Yeah, That's the question. Yeah, he can. Yeah, he can. And um, I feel that he has uh, Mr. Olympia written all over him. Now, so did I. Right. So did you. Is this on the screen right now? It's on the screen, but I can put it on. This was a video of Steve Weinberg. Yeah, if I remember we, that. I wasn't there at the gym. Can, I've seen it. Yeah. I can play it, and you can maybe talk about... Uh, sure. You no, you know, um, you know, like I was saying, Jay, uh, Olympia has some of our names on it. Um, it had my name on it. It had Ron, uh, Sean's name on it, right? It has Kevin's name, but it doesn't mean you're going to get it. He has that potential, and... Uh, we and would where, have, do you, where do you think he needs work to stand next to the to stand sure. next to Ron? More Let's more back, there. more back, uh, a wider back, and more back uh, uh, thickness and detail. So that's one of the great things we talked about already is just building up his just mountains and crevices of back. But and what if he's in better like condition that. from the back? Is it going to appear that he has more? I mean, it look will. At, Look it at will. the pecs. I mean, the midsection is yeah. just unheard of. His with. waist, his shoulder to waist distribution is mat. It's just nuts. Uh, he probably has one of the smallest waists of, of a big man on stage. And then he doesn't have poor wheels whatsoever. His calves are just freaky. Uh, his body parts are just, it's just freaky. And, you know, what I, I try to tell the people, if you look at him and you see how much of a freak he is, he's, oh, good grief. Look at that. Freaking feathers in the pecs. And it's like two weeks before the show. I know. You know, and I remember people texting me like, ah, oh, his glutes are not tight enough for this, that, and other. I'm like, dude, he got two more weeks. I go, and plus, we're not trying to go get that right now. It doesn't be matter. Stupid. Yeah. It'd be stupid to try to go peel off 100% when he's trying to get ready for the Olympia and the Ono Classic. Um, but that's what we're working on now, and, and more so just projection. You know, like I told him, I go, geez, man, you're a freak. You were born a freak, right? I do joke. Think, do you think, we, we joked those, do you think he could win the Olympia's first shot? I think he has a shot. I think he has a shot. That's a lot because you've I think stood he has next a shot. to the best. Yeah, I think he has a shot. There's only know. one guy that's ever won the Olympia on his first attempt. Larry Scott. Wow. <laughs> the first one ever. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Right? I think he has a shot. Um, if not, you know, the. I don't even like talking uh, defeat. You know, like a lot of people say, oh, you need to che- get a cheat meal. I don't believe in cheat meals. It's a reward meal. I... Now, I understand you can't set your mind up for any type of negative whatsoever. I've done that my whole life right now. So even saying cheat meal is identified into cheating in some way. Why are you getting this meal anyway? It's a reward because of your hard work and everything like that. So I really fully do. Uh, uh, Flex, do you believe he's confident? Oh, gosh. Yeah, my problem is when he talks to me, he's beyond confident. And then, he buys it a problem. I mean, then, then, but but when he's out good. in front of people, he he's he's he is very humble, and he's very humble when he speaks to me. But I hear and I feel as confident. I was very proud 
after he won the, uh, the Texas show that he finally gave a little bit Speech. of who Andrew <laughs> is. You know what I'm I mean? Here to I whoop some yeah, ass. I whoop some, I'm here to whoop some ass. I whoop some ass, and we're going to, you know, Arnold Classic. I'm like, finally. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, finally. There's nothing wrong with believing in yourself. He's highly respectful towards everybody else. He's respectful, but there's nothing wrong with believing in yourself. You know what I mean? And finally, he's starting to say it, so that means he's going to be a different animal now. You know we, were I mean? talking, we were talking about this with the, the landscape. of. It looks like the future landscape is going to be a lot of tall guys. Yeah. That whether it's him or whether it's uh, Crizzo or Crizzo yeah, or yeah, even yeah. Rami's six feet tall. Yeah, he's, yeah, 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 yeah. These guys yeah, are tall. Yeah. yeah. In, in uh, Samson, he's Samson. Yes, foot. I was trying I mean, to think of his name. There's a bunch a of guys. Regan's yeah. six foot. Yeah. He's yeah. mid 290s now. Like, yeah. There's a bunch of guys with aesthetics that are slowly coming into the mix. So yeah. there's a chance in the near future we could have four or five guys that are six foot And I think here. it should be that way. Um, I've always highly respected Jay. I don't know whether it, is. it was his, his mean to or not, but he was patient. You were patient. You didn't try to go and take me on or Ronnie on when you first entered into the Olympia. I felt that you were patient. You developed yourself. I wanted to stand next to you guys. But <laughs> <so bad, folks. laughs> well, you developed yourself. And only when you were at full force of yourself, you started just clicking off people, you know, and I think that's a, that's a big mistake. A lot of uh, athletes make like, you know, even Richie talk about it now. He ruined himself chasing Lee, Jason. you know, uh, instead of just bettering himself and seeing if that point came. So my, my biggest thing is, is, was whatever happens to Andrew, as long as we're pacing him, because it don't actually have to be this year. We want no. it to be, but it is written for him as long as we do things right and keep him super, super healthy. And uh, I'm not going to tell, you know, his whole story. That's for him to come out and say it. But, um, yeah, Are you doing what we have to do to look a certain way Uh there's amateurs who's never competed, took in more and more often than he has. So he's so his platform is so green. I just joke with him like, come on, man, you're pure blood. You know, you're freaking you know, you're from from Nigeria. Your blood's the been the non tainted. Nigeri with. Nigerians <laughs> are on the come up right now. Yeah, like look crazy. at everything. Uh, look at all these guys. Bodybuilding, we got like three of them. You know, MMA. You know, uh, up until Hussein just lost his title, but you know he fought a perfect fight. He just fell for something. I seen it coming. Um, but he's me. still the champion. Um, the heavyweight guy is, is a champion. I mean, you know, uh, I think just no matter what, the aura, that yeah, feeling Francis that you McGowan, don't have to. Right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. have to be from he's the United beast. States to be a champion anymore has been broken, which is great because it dares everybody to be able to uh, the dream. Wow. We're looking forward to it just because I. Like I, I said, hope I he makes it right now. We're, we're, we're waiting for his, uh, his visa, and, man, it's like all hands are on deck and everything. His ticket's already paid for for Olympia, and, you know, I'm, I'm actually waiting for a message from him um, um, tomorrow, you know, where the, you know. Is he, he, a, is he a U.K. citizen or Nigerian? No, Nigerian, okay, which so makes it a process. little harder. Yeah, it's a process and everything like that. So I'm like, well, geez. You, you Does know, he want to move to the States? He loves that. He, no, he loves to buy. Yeah. Yeah, it's so it's, inexpensive. No taxes, inexpensive, <sighs> great gyms. And they treat their athletes like celebrities. Royalty. Royalty. Are you going? Are you going for in October to the Dubai Pro Show? I'm thinking uh, about Dubai it. Muscle Show. Or I'm Dubai thinking Pro. about it. I'm thinking. Are you going to be there? Uh, I don't. We're not. not You've been here so many times. We have. We have. But um, talk a little bit about your supplement brand. So very happy because uh, I know you've. I know you've. You know you've had a lot of things happening over the years. I mean, yeah. we both endorsed a lot of brands, and yeah. then uh, you know you came out with your own brand. Yeah, you know, and. Um, yeah, I just seen the success of you and Ronnie and Lee Labrada and uh, and Kevin and, 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 and everybody, Richie. Um, and, you know, the truth is, like I didn't believe in myself in any other way, I didn't believe that I could do it. And I remember Robin still, you know, to this day was pushing me like, you know, why are you comfortable taking money instead of believing that you're worth money? And I'm like, come on, Robin. That's Matt's, I mean, that's Matt's motto, like. You know, and he's like, you know, Flex, he goes, they're willing to pay you that type of money. What what do you think you're really worth? He goes, man, you're just too comfortable. You just don't believe it. I'm like, no, I don't. I am more comfortable getting a guaranteed check instead of putting myself out there. And, you know, um, after after, uh, bio, uh, after uh, the last company let me go on Christmas, and, you know, we were killing the numbers there. You know, uh, there we had almost tripled the numbers in sales. And they still let me go on Christmas. Hey, Merry Christmas. By the way, not renewing you. And I'm like, 
And it just Jesus. broke me, you know? Yeah, it just broke me. Like, what can I do? I remember Robert always told me, as long as you do your job and better yourself, you can always have a job. Don't F a contract flex. They're more powerful than you. Anyone can break their contract with you. All they got to do is have better lawyers. And if they hired you, they got better lawyers <laughs> yeah. than you. And they're going to break I'm you. with it right now. <laughs> you know, I tell everybody, I don't care what your contract says. It means nothing. nothing. It means nothing. Yeah. You can have all these guarantees. How much money do you have to fight it? That's right. If they got yeah. longer money than you, you lose. If they got more money to prove their lie, and you don't have enough money to prove your truth, you're, you might as well be lying. Yep. So that happened to me. And um, then, you know, a, a whirlwind, I end up losing my leg. And, uh, um, and I'm like, I'm just sitting there and I'm like, you know, I'm living off of like the reserve of my account and it's like dwindling. And, and I got millions of dollars of, of bills now from losing my leg. Great American insurance we have, right? It's just beautiful. So I'm like looking at bankruptcy because my, my, my bills are into the millions. I'm living off my credit cards and everything like that. And, um, you know, federally I get... Uh, um, transferred into a category of disability. I'm federally disability. So now I get paid, you know, um, I get a check for being disabled. And I remember um, us fighting for me to, to be that. And I remember them told, they told me back in my kidney transplant, you know, you, you have a rare disease, there's no cure. You can go in disability now. And I'm like, no, it's kind of cheating. I can still yeah, work. Yeah. I can get out there, you know, but now it's just different. And I was like, wow. And I just, you know, was really broken. I'm like, all right, let's do it. So we fought and we actually got back pay of a year. And yep. I just took that money and I invested it into, you know, I contacted uh, All American uh, Sports, which was one of my partners with uh, All American EFX. And I said, hey, you know, Jeff, you know, I know you're super expensive, Jeff man. Galini, but, you right? know, yeah, Jeff Galini, yeah, you know, nice you mind, Very you mind work, oh, yeah, you mind working out something with me. And he's like, you know what, Flex? You deserve your own company. Everybody else, you deserve it. Let's make this happen. So he accepted me and started making my products and stuff like that. And, you know, I just, I just picked the, 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 the three lowest hanging fruits, you know. So they already invested millions, if not billions of dollars in the low T, helping everybody to understand that men go through uh, low T like women go through menopause. It's a natural phenomenon, just something we didn't talk about. So testosterone booster, right, immediately. Everybody wants to lose weight. You know, everybody in their grandmother wants to lose weight. Fat burner, number two. Pre-workout, geez, people work hard. Now we're in an era just people just don't have the energy, can't get it from food and everything like that pre-workout. So those are my three low-hanging fruit. But I remember representing other companies like we have, listening to the horror stories of lawsuits or a bigger company just, you know, like you said, just coming over and just taking over because they got more money than you. So immediately i trademarked my names and i want to spoof off of it so you know flex generator spoofing off of flex and i trademarked that i wanted uh t-rex for my testosterone booster because it just come on cojones man yeah, like yeah. t-rex <laughs> imagine right and it was taken so i'm like all right flex t so trademark that and then um foreplay you know i was like come on what is foreplay you know, everybody know what foreplay is, right? And it's like synonymous with pre-workout foreplay, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, you know, let's just spell it different and trademark it. So, Jay, I just want to say you're one of the first people to come out and congratulate me. I remember we were at uh, the gym um, that you train at. I used to go over there sometimes. Um, what is it called? Beautiful lighting, always great to take back pictures. Uh, was it at um, City Athletics? Or? No, no, no. Uh, they just opened. They've been open for a while. Kilo? No, a fit club. Fit, fit club. club. Yeah, fit yeah, club. yeah, yeah. Fit club. We're sitting there talking. I was so nervous, and I just wanted to ask you questions. And I, you know, Ronnie's been super helpful. He's like, dude, any question, anything I can help. You know, he's been so open traveling the world. If it wasn't for Flex, I wouldn't be Mr. Olympia. So I got advice for him. Um, before I even did a company, I would talk to Lee Labrada. You know, we're good friends. I'm like, should I do it, man? It's horrible time. He goes, do it, Flex. Mm -hmm. I go, but, you know, like, it's like, we're in a recession, you know, COVID's happening. He goes, no, do it, do it. Now is perfect timing. And um, I remember seeing you at the Fit Club and, you know, and, you know, you had congratulated me. I was like, you know, I'm like, he's like, you know, anything, you know, question you have, you know, ask me. And I was like, damn, I'm, I really want to ask him some questions. I'm like, you know, and I started answering you questions. I remember you were asking me like, man, you know, good luck, do it. And anything. Like, so it was people like you who made it. And like I was telling off camera, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you're one of my biggest inspirations because you, you didn't come from California. You know, I remember you as a kid and when I seen you at, 
at the firehouse and I made a comment about your insane, sick-ass triceps, you know, like, you know, kids, you're going to go far, you know, not knowing that you're going to be as explosive as you are now, um, but just seeing everything that you've done and, uh, and, and how you believed in yourself and you made things happen, you know, uh, we consider you, if you don't know, one of the greatest success stories business-wise as one of the bodybuilders, other than probably... You know, maybe Arnold, who had an incredible platform back then. You didn't even have that amazing platform, but look what you built. So, you know, I'm just just daring myself to dream. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited that um, the athletes I've been able to bring to my stable, um, an MMA fighter, uh, William Knight, who has a big fight coming up. Um, I signed him um, and actually haven't even announced it publicly. This is the first time announcing it. I just got all my products accepted by WADA. So I made wow. a deal with uh, with the MMA because they're like, you know, William can't take your products because we're going to test him. Mm-hmm. And if he tests his dirty, it's going to be on you. And I'm like, God dang. And William's like, man, I thought you said your your uh, your uh, manufacturing plan is a WADA, you know, certified. I go, yeah, but that don't mean all products come out of it. So uh, MMA made me go through all these restrictions and stuff like that improving. And we just got our certificate. So that's massive so now an mma can brag and tell that you know hey his prizes are accepted they're good they're good to go so having william knight uh nightmare on my team and uh about a week ago i just signed signed a great way uh, raymond daniels who's um george st pierre uh, everybody considered him the greatest striker of all times he's definitely one of the most flamboyant amazing fighter and he just uh, left bellator he's a bellator champion uh, he just left bellator and signed with karate combat and his uh, breakout fight is this weekend. And uh, I was like, man, are you comfortable using the products before your fight? He goes, yeah, man. He goes, I feel like I could fight all day on your foreplay. So you know this, Jay. What, what's just shocking is some of these sports are so ignorant to nutrition. Mm-hmm. And I listen to how to, like, they lose water. I'm like, what are you? Why? Like, we lose water over a period of time, and we're so healthy that we still can go on stage and fight. And you guys are, like, damn near dying before. And I'm like, yeah, to be restrictive and make weight. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, man, so what we can bring to the table and helping them and, and finally having a product that, that I can bring to the table and that, that, that everybody can use is green for for just me, just little skinny Kenny, you know, and it's all my own little pennies and being able to, to do that. I'm just really happy. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, I'm just I'm just really just trying to help people, you know, do I dream of being successful as you? Yeah, I do. But, you know, I don't know if I really want it because then you got to bring in so many people in your camp. I was listening to what you were saying earlier off camera about having this person and then this person less and now having this and having to move this over, having this. And I'm like, God, I, I don't know if I want all that. I just want the comfortability of being able to pay for my bills, take care of a few people and maybe go on a vacation every once in a while. That's my dream. You know what is funny is I send a lot of messages out. I do like the shout out cameo app. It's like yeah. birthday yep. wishes and all that. And I always say this message to people is like, I wish you all the best success and wealth Yeah, in life. And wealth is, is opinionated on what wealth That's is, right. right? And I think you, you talk about the appreciation, right? And, uh, you know, we look at achievements and you can sit there and say, there's certain people on a pedestal saying, well, how do you judge someone's success? You judge by like how much money they make or mm-hmm. how many people yeah. they're, they're friendly with or, or they, you know, actually helped or, or, or like the popularity. Like do you look on someone on Instagram and they got, you know, double digits, a million followers. Yeah. Do you f- consider that like, like someone of like wealth or... It is a form of wealth, right? I I think, you know, in our ignorance, we look at money as only wealth. But, you know, I'm not wealthy that way. I'm wealthy with just love. You know, I'm wealthy uh, with just uh, people giving me great opinions. Um, I'm wealthy in ability of being able to give back knowledge and stuff like that. So there's different types of wealth that will never be taken away. You know, they'll be buried with you in your grave as a beautiful thing. And there's other wealth you... You know, like um, Denzel Washington said, you never see like, you know, um, a, a, U- a U-Haul behind a hearse. But how we make people feel can live on in infinity. And that's just, you know, kind of, you know, what I'm trying to do. And I agree with you. There's so many variants of wealth. And I'm only now starting to understand that I'm wealthy in other ways. Because before I just identified to, you know, as I was just saying to Flex, you know, it, it, I'm embarrassed 
you know, that I, I'm not, I don't have a million followers. I literally get shit from people. I get messages of people saying I'm phony and cussing me out and calling me the N-word because they think I'm pretending to be flex because I'm not in the millions like everybody else is for my time. And I'm like, I, I honestly, you know, for a person who I love for self, self-esteem, that hurts. I'm like, geez, my, you know, I look, wow, I'm not accepted. But I can't, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be wiser now and understand I'm not valued by my car. I'm not valued by the girl I'm married to. I'm not valued by my bank account. Instagram I'm valued, followers. Yeah, I'm not valued by my Instagram followers or likes. I'm valued based on a value that I feel I am to myself. And that should be I'm the richest man in the world. And I'm just now getting there. At 50, at mid-50s. At 57. You know what? And, um, and, and let, hopefully that's a lesson to people who are struggling. Hey, come on. As long as you continue evolving, you can continue living, you have a chance to change and better your situation. <clears throat> and now we live in such an era uh, that suicide is so prevalent, especially with teens. It's been proven that Instagram and Facebook and Twitter is a main reason why suicide is so great with younger people because people put up these dynamic things they that they're not. They think it's something that's all a facade, so they, right? So they think they're nothing because of that. You know, and I just, uh, you know, like you, I just want to try to just like be honest. I just want to be, and you know, and if that doesn't mean that I ever make into the millions or I have a, a, a queue of, around the corner, that's okay. I'm meant to help the people that I'm only meant to help. That's it. And I'm good with that now, or I'm becoming good with that. I think a lot of people that value money <clears throat> a lot, not everyone, they've never a lot of people haven't had something happen to them where they realize yeah. money doesn't matter. You yeah. know, for, for me, I don't even know if you know this, I, I've had a transplant in my eye. No. My left eye. Wow. And you didn't, I lost you didn't get it like green or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> no. when, when you have something that, that you take for granted <laughs> and you're worried about cars or money or this or this and you lose your vision or you lose a kidney where you can die or like C.T. Fletcher and I have talked about a yeah. heart. You realize it doesn't matter how much money you have, it can't change that. Can't pay for that. And there's a lot of people, once that happens, they take a step back and go, I don't need millions of dollars, but if I can help the people around me do better, as long as I'm good and I have what I want, I don't need all these material things. And it, I think it changes you when you've had that moment in life where you're like, this shit doesn't matter. You're spot on. You're spot on with that, Matt, because it is true. And I think only, you know... Um, me and Usum, we, we kind of send each other messages, and it's such an amazing, you know, that he would even respond to me, you know, um, out of three-something million followers and even seen my message. I don't even think he follows me, so that means it goes in that other category where you really yeah. don't see. And um, I had sent him, um, you know, we are going back and forth, and uh, I had sent him a message after his fight, and I just said, you know, champions are defined through diversity, not when you're winning. Everybody wants you. You know, all the girls want you. <clears throat> All the guys want you. Uh, money's not a problem. Cars, girls, I go. But when you went through adversity, that's when you find out who you're really a champion or not. You know, that's yeah. when you really find out. And uh, the same as when you have something taken away or threatened. Mm -hmm. Do you really figure out how much you liked it or how much you wanted it when you have to yeah. fight for that when it's been so easy before? Uh, the, I think the saddest thing is, is when people have been through detrimental uh, things and still hasn't changed. I don't know if you've ever heard it, Jay, but one of the sickest things I've heard from athletes is, man, if I could be on the Olympia stage and, and win the Olympia, man, I, and do a crap pose, if I just died right there, I'd be in heaven. I'm like, you wouldn't be in heaven. I guarantee you that's not where you're going. And how sick is that? It's a sport to live for, not to die for. You know, and it's, it's, it's sad that some people, you know, like myself, I never thought that way, but I thought sick things and I've done sick things to myself that you value something more than you do your own life, you know, and, and just the love that you have from your loved ones and your family. So, you know, again, just having my little company, Flex Wheeler Signature Series, and then my hemp company that, you know, I'm not going to be long winded with, but um, they chased me around at the Arnold last year. And I, come on, I, you know, I lost my leg. I, I've had every company in our, their cousin send me hemp, you know, 5,000 milligrams, 10,000 milligrams. And, you know, 
you know, none of them work. So I just lost my belief. And this guy is like selling his hemp to me. I was like, come on, man, get out of here. And I'm having my security push him away. And finally, he caught me one on one. And, and I'm not I'm not wired where I can just like tell a person no to their face. And um, we sat there and we talked and, you know, he, sp he served for the special forces uh, for England. He's like, man, I poured every penny i poured my my pension everything my kids money everything into this because i believed in it <sighs> now you got me because i just did that and i know what that's like so as we sat and we talked and you know he just wanted me to try it i'm like listen just man i'm gonna be honest i, I this stuff don't work yeah you know, i don't know what you pushing but he's like flex just try it just take it just try it you know here and i'm like no i got the three that you left every day before you know i don't <laughs> want to like keep taking your product i know it costs money you know and i had no intentions on using it and i end up hurting my back in a hotel and then i put on and i, I was like okay what is he really having here <laughs> come on because cbd don't work you know it don't work you know icy hot works better than cbd cbd and I kept trying it, and uh, it was that time last uh, last year uh, after the Honor Classic uh, UK. You guys can re probably remember I was flying back home, but it was a time that that Instagram, Facebook, and uh, everything went down. It was just nothing, and I'm trying to text him on a plane to let him know that it works. And I, you know, so I get home, and he calls me. He's like, "Man," he's like in tears. He goes, "Wow, you're one of the ones that didn't work for." I'm like, "No, no, no." I go, "You just got to give me a couple more weeks. I don't understand." You know, because, listen, I'm on the strongest opiates on the planet, and they don't bring me relief. And this is bringing me some relief. I go, so I just got to wrap my brain around it. But anyway, long story short, I actually bought into the company. I'm one of the partners awesome. of the company because it's it just when, when, you, when you deal with chronic pain like mine, when you, when you, when you deal with pain that, that, that triggers you to want to take your life because you know it's never going to go away, and I stay – like the last two days I was at a level 10 and I just stayed at home just like in a fetal position, just sobbing because I could drug myself out on, on opiates, but I'm just drugged out. And I don't want to play with those too much because, you know, they didn't kill Superman before, you know. Um, but, you know, so... The Is it your leg flex? Or? Yeah, I, I just my, 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 my leg. I don't even really talk about my arm anymore, but my arm is tremendously atrophied. When they were trying to save my leg, they put a stent in my my chest that goes all the way down to my leg and I was a blood supply and it blew while I was in the hospital. So I almost bled out. So I didn't know it, but blood and nerves and tissue don't get along. You know, I'm just thinking like the human body, it's all over the place, you know, but you know, your nerves are protected by this thin film and ne nothing never touches it. So when it blew out, I lost full use of my right arm, my, my thumb, these, these two, uh, my thumb, my finger, they stay at like a six all day, just a tingling feeling. I couldn't write for like over a year. You know, I lost my whole bicep and everything like that. But um, it's from nerve damage. And and, and now um, they actually kind of, you know, jokingly say, we should have just took your leg the first time instead of all the surgeries because all the surgeries is the reason why you have nerve damage now because we kept going in and cutting everything. So, But just being able to have a product that, that you know, and I don't, I don't lie to nobody. You know, my, my pain is just like different. Um, and if I'm not like at a 10, it might bring me down to a, a, a eight or a seven, but that would change my life. If that's enough to keep me from the bad thoughts and wow. So again, just being able to have something to give people that actually really works, you know, I don't, I don't care, you know, and, and we've, wow, we've done incredibly well in a year of good grief, our growth, we now just got accepted why we can sell in the united states and man we got some some massive power behind us i can't i can't say this yet but one of the richest persons in the world has contacted us and wanted to do business because they've seen how how well it works and it's like one of the richest men in the world so but great you know again i, I just want to pay my bills and be happy but more so man i'm sure you've heard it before jay someone has walked up to you and told you that you saved their life over and over there's no money there's no car there's no girl there's nothing that's going to make you feel no like olympia that. trophy i have the olympia trophies i have the sandals i tell people all the time they're sitting here you know <laughs> all these accolades on the walls you know after you win them and you look at them for a while and it's like okay what meaning does it have besides history like the actual people reaching out and being like you actually I changed their life and i ask i ask everyone i say do you remember the day you made the decision to change your life 
especially the weight loss people, right? Yeah. And they remember these. Oh, yeah, they do. Always. Yeah. Stuff like that or, or, you know, um, I've had people walk up to me and show me their tattoo and they have a tattoo of me and I'm like, or, you know, meet my son or my daughter, you know, their name, name is Flex, Flex. <laughs> you know, or my, my, and I'm my like, dog's, my dog's name's Cutler. Yeah. You know how many times <laughs> I got that? <laughs> but come on, man. There's no amount of money. There's, there's no greater gar- gratitude to have that you can change one direction. The ripple effect of that is just, that's godlike, and, and And I understand when someone says that to me, it's not me. It's, it's, it's whatever power that he allowed me to have for them just to see a glimmer of that. And, and you know, I know this has been a long podcast, and I'll, I'll end it on my behalf. You guys can continue with me. But it really, that epiphany really hit me. I was with my daughter, Pearl, and we were back in Morgan Hill. And I was sitting at in and out I love in and out like you do. Yeah, of course, you know that. Uh, I do. <laughs> um, and, you know, we always can tell, right, when someone's trying to make an approach to us. You know, they, you know they're standing yeah, at it. We, we can always can tell. Away, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we have a choice. You know, me, I make eye contact with them. I'm like, just so they know, hey, it's okay to come over. You know, yeah. if I don't make contact, I might not be in a good mood. I might kind of smile and look down. But <laughs> I always try to make contact because I want to make them feel like, like, like I would want to feel if I wanted to walk up to somebody who I thought helped me or of greatness. So anyway, um, you know, this guy made his way over and he's like, you know, and he's telling me about what I mean to him. And he didn't know that I came from the same area as him and everything. And I'm sitting there. I used to always say, you know, you know, thank you. But it, it dawned on me like, man, who are you? You got it constantly trying to kill yourself. You have no self-esteem. You have no belief in yourself. You have no self-value. How can you change anyone's life? Wow. So it must be him. Just a millisecond that he's allowed to see his greatness through my eyes, someone else sees that, and that triggers that effect. Mm -hmm. And at that point on, I just always just, I have to give praise to him because he's Alpha and Omega. You know, it's it's, it's, it's like, J.S., you had a son, and... And your son just grew up to do greatness. And he profoundly listened to you because you did greatness. Mm-hmm. You're a reflection in his eyes. And everyone who sees him and sees what he's doing, what he, that person's doing is a reflection of what you gave them. Man, that's what my dad did. Mm-hmm. You know, my father in heaven. So, but it's the greatest feeling in the world. You know, changing someone's life. I mean, our trophies get dusty, you know, we get dusty, we get old. We're not even an, I'm not even a figment of what I used to be. And to still have someone come up to you and recognize you and respect you, come on, man, you can't pay for that. Yeah, you've seen it a lot. I see, I see it a lot because when we travel, a lot of times. I'm so you're on a perimeter front. watching a person trying to make their approach watching and it. watching a whole thing of unfold. Course. But yeah. a lot of times what happens is if he's standing there with somebody, I stand towards the front and kind of you know deviate when people come in and out and the people will tell me their stories. Mm. And they'll be in tears and you're just like, okay, how do I not like, and then, but it's not me. They're just telling me. Yeah. And a lot of times they're telling me because they're so nervous they probably won't even get to him to be able to they're, tell. They're him. so nervous that they say it to me to get those nerves out of the way. And sometimes I'll hear these stories and I'm like, "Shit, man, how do I fucking?" Yeah, like, this is. And then they go tell him, and then the next person tells me. Yeah. So I'm always in the parameter, seeing these things and hearing it's them. Very as well. draining, isn't it? Yeah, but you know what? We we we're on a platform. But I'm gonna. I had to force him to do this podcast. He didn't want to do it, and he's like, you know, no one wants to listen to me. Whatever. And now people approach him and say i listen to you guys so you kind of hear that and you don't then it, i think it's really motivated you now to continue and More. push and Good. see I, I i know my lane when we talked about that yeah i'm not in front of the camera i don't need the accolades i don't need attention i need nothing i know what i do and i'm good at what i do he thinks that so well, yeah i could be terrible <laughs> but i never wanted to be in the spot right. because i'd rather have you and him or someone else here so i've always i don't know what and that that could be making an insecurity or something where you feel like you're not good enough but i've realized i know him as good as anyone in the world 
and I know I can feed, he can feed off me because even when we leave here, there isn't a day we don't speak mm-hmm. or talk or text all day throughout the day. So it's more comfortable with him for me and yeah. I'm becoming more comfortable in growing as a person there. as yourself. I, I haven't done an interview on anything in one interview. He refuses it. But in Matt, you, you gotta, so that's so. selfishness. It, it could it, be. No, it, 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 it's, it's, yeah. it's a bit of Selfish, selfishness. It, it's com- selfishness or selflessness? No, it's, it's selfishness because, but it's born from, you just don't feel you have a value, right? And you don't feel, you know, it, it, it is. It, it doesn't it have to be, be deep as, root, as mine is, yeah. but you, you don't feel that, you know, you've already said it. Who wants to listen to me? Yeah. So you, you've already spoken into existence what really going on to you. I'm, yeah. I'm just a guy behind. I'm, I'm the guy that, I'm the puppet maker. I'm the guy that helps yeah. a guy who beat a star. But what you have to understand is, Matt, is how powerful that is. Mm-hmm. And you don't. You're sending them, but you, you'll hear me. Me and you have had conversations before. Have. Deep okay. ones. You know. Um, <laughs> and, and you know, I don't, I don't let you get away with it. And you respect that. And you wouldn't let me get away with it if the, the tables were turned. Yeah. But that power that you have is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, is amazing. And, and you don't understand or see it. But how many people want to be in that position and you can inspire that person who thinks, oh, well, I have this ability and I have this talent, but ah, who would want to work with me or who would want to hear from me? We all have our strengths. See, I, I have that, but I just don't put it out there publicly. But if you don't. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Jay, no, he's good. Jay, he, Jay has everything he has. What if he doesn't put it out there publicly? Yeah. I I no, 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 hear me. Lot I hear me out. There's a lot I what, don't do, though. I what, think, what, I what would he be if he didn't put himself yeah. out there publicly? Where would Jay be right now? No, I get that. No, no, no. where would he be? I'm not sure. He wouldn't know. be anywhere. Yeah, he'd be doing a normal job. Somewhere. It, how many, how many Mister Olympias out there yeah. who didn't market themselves and to do what Jay done to make themselves successful? So the title just don't get you there. Of course, he did the work and he put himself out there. Yeah. So only because of that is he he's recouping those benefits because yeah. he put himself out there. I get so I mean, if you I mean, if you don't put yourself out there, how could you inspire the other potential great people? It's true, or people who actually have the potential. We would hope to have even better, greater ability than and you do of going out there and helping people reach their potential. How do they find out? How do they know? And for me, me doing this is That's me taking part that of step. It. There you know, you go. So, so I did because yeah. for years, people hit me up all the time. We come on my podcast, you never No, 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 no. I don't yeah. want to. I know my, I'll stick to my lane, but me doing this, I'm becoming more comfortable with it. Yeah. So and it is, should be. it is a, it, it sounds, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a therapy to a certain degree. It's an evolution where it's I'm, an evolution. I'm becoming more comfortable with speak because I hate public speaking. I don't I do, do it too. I and do too. I'm getting better. I seriously, I do. I hate it. I'm well, uncomfortable. You came on this podcast. It's kind of like, you know, I've always said I'm, I'm, I'm the world. I consider myself one of the world's greatest chameleons because I know me, but I know the projection I have to put out. Yeah. Right. Um, I hate it. I hate being in public. Um, you know, I feel like I'm going to trip over my shoes my, uh, uh, anywhere I'm at. I don't care if I'm in a store. I'm conscious. Am I standing up straight? Am I walking straight? Who's looking at me? That's, those are my thoughts. Even more so now uh, being an amputee. Yeah. Um, those are my thoughts. It's just purely my insecurity, but I know I can't project that. You know, I, I know how I feel when I walked out on stage that they called me out first in the first call out. I'd walk out there like this, but that ain't how I feel. I'm telling myself, good damn it, they're going to figure out I don't belong here. Yeah. I, I always wonder when, when they're going to call me up and come take my trophy because they made a mistake, you know. Um, but I knew I couldn't project that. So if I walked out and I act uh, that, that Flex Wheeler character and you've seen that, Versus me walking out going like this. Yeah. Of course. You were cocky. I'm sitting in a whole different. You were cocky, dude. <laughs> That's okay. You got to be. I, I, had, I had to be to defend Kenny Wheeler. And you know what? Who gives an F about the guy next door or the girl next door? If you don't present yourself like you're bigger than life, then how do you attract that? It's simple as that. We've seen it. You've seen it in Phil. We've seen it in girls. Wow, girl's a knockout. She could be a supermodel, but she don't believe in herself. Yeah, yeah. She's just normal. And she carries on her normal life because of that. You know, you've seen it in Phil. We can see it. We can look at a person like, wow, they have greatness in them. Yeah. Now it's what do you do about it? If you don't put yourself out there, you'll be the greatest secret that ever wasn't. Mm-hmm. 
I'm you got to put that. yourself out there. <laughs> That's a good quote. But, but you know what, though? I, I, put my, I put myself out there in small spurts. I'm doing it more. And I, do, and I do realize that I have a lot of knowledge and experience that people don't have. And I do put it out there. I, I choose who to, who to help and who to do it with yeah. for the time you got to be selective. It's but draining. A, oh, if you have it's draining. <laughs> oh, no, I do. Just, you know, I, 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 I know Stan was, uh, he was, uh, you know, uh, complimenting me with, Stan, uh, with, uh, with Andrew. And he's like, Flex, he goes, I know you're tired. He goes, I know how much you put. He goes, you, you, you have no, no other way. Yeah, he goes, I know you're dead tired. And he was like, no, don't go, you know, um, don't go to uh, Texas. Andrew begged me. He's like, please, Flex, don't come. You know, he goes, I'm not going to be able to relax because I know you're hurting. You know, you, you just you've barely been on a hospital a week. He goes, I'm, I'm going to be more focused on you than 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 the show. And then um, um, my uh, great partner, I wouldn't be able to do this without George. Uh, he's like, Flex, he goes, please, brother, don't come. Yeah. And I, I got to be there, man. You know, I know he's going to win. It's our first one. It's, you yeah. know, and he's like, Flex, you will be there. Everybody knows what you've done. You'll be at done. the next one. Huh? You'll be at the next yeah. one. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll all be there. And I, I was like, <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I already bought my flight. You know, I was looking at hotels. I'm like, sorry, I'm coming. And Jory goes, okay, let me put it like this. You know when you're on a plane and they say put on your mask before you put on your loved one's mask or your child's mask? He goes, you have to protect yourself first in order to protect Andrew. And if you don't put on your mask first, you can cause him to stumble and fall. And then I remember Andrew's words, bro, if you come, I'm going to be more focused on you than my show. Mm -hmm. And I just, it still kills me to this day. And I know I made the right mistake, but I'm like, I'm being selfish if I show up now because it's about me, yeah. not about him. But think of it like this. You're going to get to see him walk across the Arnold stage in Europe. Yeah. And, oh, that's, no, no, and no. that's where, and listen, that's where you made your, I mean, obviously it's a different stage in Ohio, yeah. but yeah. you made your big marks on that stage yeah, yeah. And, so, and that's what he kept saying but they both but like bro this is nothing you're going to be at the biggest one you know so and then you'll be at he the goes in, no matter what we'll be at the olympia so i'm like you know but again all that's irrelevant the truth is what it boiled down to and i had to look in the mirror and tell myself is no dude you want to be there because of you not because of him because they're already telling you what formula they need yeah and if you go against that then you're just it's about you it's about you wanting to be on stage, about you and, you know, potentially other athletes who burned you. You didn't get that recognition, yeah. you know, and he's like, don't worry about it. You know, everybody's going to know. Everybody knows already. So I had to swallow my pride and say, hey, you know, why are you really doing this? Is it all about you or is it, is it about him? Like you had your shot. Now's your chance of trying to give other people their shot and trying to prove to other potential athletes that I'm, I'm one of those guys, you know, that believe. But it's draining. And I'm so tired when I'm done. Uh, you know, even like at events, people don't get it. When we're at events, you know, you have to meet each person at their energy level. Or else they walk away disenchanted. And they'll, for the rest of their life, like, oh, Jay, yeah, man, I shook his hand. He didn't even look at me. You know, he didn't, he didn't even say two words. They don't know whether your dog got killed, your, your cat got run over, whatever. They don't care. It's that three seconds of life that they get to meet you that changes everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Wow. This is a good podcast. How long we go? I don't know. We've been going for over two hours. God. I got I to gotta get into that one All right, so I want to finish this, though. I do want to finish. Uh, talk, talk about the Navigator before we hang up. Oh, you know what's funny? So I was telling Jay this. You don't remember, you know that, the, remember the, your Navigator? The first time. Yes. The first time How do you I you know about you? it? What? 01 USA. I was out, and me and Dexter are walking through, and he goes, we're gonna go ride with Flex, and I would, I was gonna I was emailing you because I wanted to buy your Navigator with all the stars on it. Wow! So me, I, you, and Flex in it. Vegas, and and I know you're gonna remember this now. So we're driving around the corner, and you're on the phone, and you're like, "Where are you at?" Okay, we go around the corner, and Victor Martinez is sitting at a bus stop with a blue shirt on because he partied for three days straight. Yeah. And you picked him yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Are you kidding that was, me? That was the first time I met you in person. You know what's so sad? I wish I would have <laughs> sold you my navigator because times are really hard for me then. I don't know why that guy tricked my car out this company. <laughs> West Coast something just did it all for me yeah. and everything. And then it ended up getting repossessed. Really? God, yeah. But that was, that was funny. In the back of my head, I'm going, I'm driving around Vegas. It was my first time in Vegas. Me, Dexter, and you, and we go find Victor, and he's 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was just before my kidney transplant. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. And uh, and it's crazy. I'm such a nice guy. I didn't even put the car in the garage because I knew they were looking for it. They kept calling me, and, you know, I'm struggling because I know I'm going to have to have kidney surgery uh, transplant, and they're telling me I'm not going to make it. And and a guy comes to repossess a car, and he knocks on the door, and he goes, you give me the keys. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and I it's on air right, so I set it all the way down, thinking he can't tow it away, and he freaks out there for like five hours, and I look out the window, and I keep glancing. I, I'm a retired officer. I knew I could have told him, get off of my property, and I didn't. Next thing you know, he airs a car up, and he's driving away with it. I'm like... <sighs> <laughs> See, you could have bought this and saved. Yeah. I could have saved. I remember that you, you said something, and you were like, "Yeah, yeah, I might be selling it." And you know, just email me. I was like, "Oh, okay." And I thought, "Well, oh fuck, gosh. man, I need an SUV." And then I was like, "What the hell? This that is on the other side of the country." So bad. I just man. remember. I just remember it had stars and stars painted all over the side. I remember, and I asked him, "I go, why, why, why stars?" He goes, "Well, first flex." He goes, "I'm investing over 100 grand in it, so I'm gonna do what I want." I go, "Yes, sir." You know, and he goes. I go, it looks like a porn star, you know, it's like, because <laughs> yeah. it was like stars being ripped off of it. And he made this, like, uh, this, uh, this front grill that had stars and had my name in it and everything yeah. like that. And that <laughs> thing was so wickedly tripped out. And he goes, no, I like stars. I'm, I'm a Dallas fan. I'm like, I'm a Raider fan. He goes, it's my money. I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> That's I forgot what, like, because I was going to, I asked you how much and you told me how much. And I was like, Fuck! I got that much in cash in my yeah. safe. It was probably a lot. I probably said I probably said something around like seventy grand or. 70, I don't remember what it was because I brought a bunch of money to gamble in Vegas Jeez. that weekend. Amazing! Amazing! Now there's seventy grand. I'll buy shit. You know? Jeez! Remember, I mean, my truck was. You're right. you're a Mercedes guy, a BMW guy. I remember back when we when I first was buying Mercedes. You know, you spend like a hundred thousand, a hundred and twenty maybe. You get everything. Yeah, yeah. You can buy 120,000 Mercedes now and it might as well be freaking a Kia. You know what I mean? You don't get no bells, no whistles, no nothing, And you know what's man. crazy? You can buy a Kia for 50,000 with all the bells and whistles. Freaking I, when I was, you know, because doing, you know, really bad for a long time on my health problems and, you know, I was saving my chips and actually I was driving around in Stan's, one of Stan's employees' car because he was so successful as a businessman. Um, he bought all the people who couldn't afford to get the work. He, he bought them Kias, and then he allowed them to pay him off. What brilliant, smart, yeah. right? You got great employees now. So he kept one just from memorabilia. And, um, you know, my car broke down, and, you know, this is when I'm training him, and he's paying me, you know, a ridiculous amount of money. He's paying me my full rate, mm -hmm. uh, which was $500 an hour. Um, he's training with me twice a day, and he's paying for somebody else twice a day. And we become, like, incredible friends. I'm like, I can't take your money anymore he goes uh, this is business this isn't pleasure this is business you know keep our friendship out of it and i'm like wow so he goes hey you know just use my kia so i'm driving on his kia for like you know a couple of years and i'm so embarrassed because i'm driving around in a beat up kia and i i see the jag and everything and i'm pricing cars out i just can't afford a mercedes no more and i'm not going to be you know buy the lower end when i'm like it's 170 160 you know and I, I see the Jag and everything, and I'm like, you know, for all the bells and whistles, things like 115, and has everything. I'm like, good grief, and it's a different body style. So it's just crazy. But now I, I, I remember I bought a Kia before, the Kia 700. Remember LeBron yeah. Le James used to market it? Yeah. That thing is wicked, man. It's got a, yeah, that thing's got like a 500 horsepower engine. and it, But it just has everything. The sleet, seats slide back. They're heated. The, the back seats move yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. You know, auto stop and all that stuff. But... Times have just changed. You, you know, know what I've mean? learned with vehicles? Because you know, when you travel a lot, you just rent cars a lot. Yeah. And sometimes you're like, oh, what is this? You get a Hyundai, yeah. and you're thinking, Hyundai is a piece of shit. No. And then you drive it, and you're like, it's got cooled seats. It's got massage seats. My Bluetooth. Auto, it's kind of what like, is it? The, the auto, uh, auto... Autopilot. Autopilot, yeah. And these cars, you're like, yo, this thing's thirty grand, and it has the same options as a $150,000 Mercedes. Or some of the options that you grand. can't get. Yeah. 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 Shit. There was one that we drove that when you speak in the front... It picks up your voice and plays it in speakers in back. So if you have kids in back, so they Are can you hear you clearly. Me? It's the the Kia SUV. Are you I'm like, kidding me? What the hell God, is this? Dang. But even like a beautiful. I, I'm, I keep thinking of getting that uh, the Tesla because I'm like, you know, my my next car. You know, I know we're pulling away from gas yep. and it's so expensive and everything. And I I remember when that first came out because I was still living in San Jose and it had it on display and everything. And I was like, wow, you could walk into the back seat without stooping down. 
Um, and now they have so variants of it, right? You know, with horsepower his and stuff is, like that. His is the ridiculous one. I'm sure. Of course. Come it on. Goes, this dude, is... You go go drive it once you push on the gas and your freaking brain. Like, oh, no. You, I, almost, I, uh, you almost pass out. My uh, The Charger, I mean, my, 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 uh, my, uh, my Jag has a little bit of work done to it, but it's a naturally uh, supercharger, twin supercharger, and I did a little work to it. So it's pretty fast for a heavy car. And I race everything like, um, you know, uh, Mustangs. Uh, Hellcats and everything. I'm like, get out of here, son. So uh, this Tesla was next to me, and you know, he glanced over him. I'm like, you don't want it, you know. So I just kind of click over in a race mode just in case, and I explode. And like before I'm even past the law, like you know, the the walk lane is two lanes, right? You know, this first and you know second lane, and you walk in between. Before I got to the second, he was so far <laughs> gone, and his car was all over the place because it's four wheel drive. But he can't. I'm like. Good and God it, and, it prob- and it wasn't this one because no. it wasn't that's the only one that, when yeah, Jay yeah. got it. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, wow. But I, I, it's crazy. Technology now is just ridiculous. And I'll just stick to my truck. <laughs> it's just simple. <laughs> I'm just thinking, I don't know. You're not simple. I've seen your jewelry. Don't lie. Listen, <laughs> talking he's talking about trucks, but ask him about the jewelry he has and yeah, the collector's item he has. So the point is we spend money on what we want to spend money on. Yeah, right. Don't yeah, well, we appreciate you, dude, for coming yeah. on. We know appreciate your time it. is restrictive, and uh, we look, look forward more. to seeing you uh, hey, all of succeed, our succeed uh, more uh, business, life, and, uh, and happiness and wellness, man. We hope you uh, stay healthy. Thank you so much, Jay, for having me on your show. Um, you know you know how I feel about you. Uh, I have so much respect for you and what you've done. You inspire me. You inspire millions, and, and I'm one of those millions. Thank you for what you're doing. and. Uh, continue blazing, tra- setting tracks and trends so uh, people like myself can be inspired and dream that we can do it, you know, from your humble beginnings and everything. Keep spreading that knowledge, dude. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. We appreciate you. Thanks.